19. <sighs> bro, these new iPhones. You what? got the new one? Trash, bro. This 16? Shit. 16? Just the new phone, bro. Like, it just keep respringing and crashing and shit. Like, what the it's fuck? It's crashing out? Mine's all cracked up, too. I was going to get a new one, but I'm not. Nah, get, get the last year, the 15, bro. 15? This, six, this 16 is like... You know they're going to suppress on purpose. They're going to suppress our episode now because we're Man, talking they don't about listen. the iPhone. They're going to be like, wow, we see them talking. AI it. Put it down in the algorithm. <laughs> no, no, they're not. But even with your newly... Uh, what was the thing that you got into last time? The program? What I get into? You were so excited about. It. You already forgot. It was you I got forgot. a notification on your phone. You said, "Oh," and then it was, "Oh, yeah, yeah." And then <laughs> pause the episode, and then it was, it was. You got into some program, some early access iPhone. Yeah, yeah no say. All right. Well, what I do know is it was a, uh, it was not a busy week for hip hop. But... Start the show. The bigger oh, yeah. picture. The bigger, the bigger picture. picture! <laughs> Elliot Wilson. <laughs> Jeremy Hecht. This DJ head. Yeah. The order is. So Back you saw the person that said that now he complained. Now he's on the, the thumbnail on the left side. Now he's he, he worked, man. You really manipulated Jeremy to move. I didn't move manipulate his spot. Jeremy. See, I thought Jeremy wasn't in control of the thumbnail. I didn't make the <laughs> thumbnail, but I I could make suggestions. Wow, that's a strategy of the thumbnail. So is he never going back to being the last? person? So what you're saying is you got minions that work under you. No, I have a team of great people who do great work. That you, you and go. you and you direct them. I, I don't direct everything, but I strategize. So do you think that, so being you being the strategist, right? Yeah. <laughs> don't you think that that's exerting some sort of supremacy over your underlings? No, I do not think that. He doesn't that. move I that think way. I give a lot of creative freedom if you ask the team on what they could do. Oh, you giving freedom now. That's crazy. Oh, my <laughs> White man God. giving some freedom? This is A white man provided some freedom? Yeah. This is an insane he way He gives us food and sleeps? <laughs> I don't provide. I don't provide food. Come on, so, but do we have to keep DJ head in the current position on the thumbnail? Yeah, Could he go back like, to his? Do you situation? like your? your uh, Should we all? I don't even know times? where I am on the thumbnail. Where am I? Your left. You you hated being on the far right. The that homies was from thing. the east side would appreciate me being on the left. And you want to know? I, not only did I edit your position on the thumbnail, I put you first. I in thought the, you said you didn't do it. This is me. I wrote the description, and I say now the bigger picture. The guys, including DJ Head. Elliot Wilson and Jeremy Hecht, I put you first on there. Oh. So don't say you're. Well, see, when I'm the first through the door, usually the black man dies first in the movie, too. Okay. Uh, So let's. (laughs) Very morbid. Let's continue, though. Uh, (laughs) Let's begin. (laughs) Speaking of uh, scripted things, you were at WWE. Yes, I was. Oh, wow. Hey, man. Shout out to uh, Sade. Shout out to the whole Netflix team. Netflix, yeah. Like Mussolini and Kennedy. You know what I'm saying? I'm a cult of personality. That's my guy, Phil, right there, a.k.a. CM Punk. You know what I'm you saying? Called by his government, Phil? That's how you do it? <laughs> Is it Philip for long? I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that's Probably, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, CM Punk from Chicago, I'm from L.A., but we have mutual uh, perspectives on life, and I share something with him. And um, This is your first time meeting the gentleman? It's my first time meeting CM Punk in person, yes. And you've always been a big fan? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of CM Punk. He, he lives a straight-edge lifestyle. He advocates for it publicly. What he doesn't. The, he doesn't do drugs or oh, for real? anything like that. I've been. I've been doing the same thing for my entire career. I remember the one when he did this. What, what they call it? He did. It, gave the speech, kind of behind the scenes, revealing speech or something. What do they call that thing? The promo we cut. That wasn't a revi- behind the scenes, but it's called the pipe bomb. The pipe bomb. Yes, That's I it. know about the pipe bomb. It's the, it's the pipe the, bomb is crazy. It's the infamous. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> it's the infamous. Uh, uh, promo but that was that real. He so he was fed up with the WWE at the it time. Was, and he... It was. It was. It was. It wasn't scripted. It was just like, here, we're gonna let you go for X amount of time and let you just whatever you want to say. Yeah. And that type of autonomy is priceless. And I will say, salute to the WWE for allowing him to do that. And then that's how we got here in this place where he's the guy. And also want to shout out to uh, my ex boss at iHeartMedia. His name is Doc Winner. When there were certain things that happened. Um, in our community, mainly def- during election year, um, last year when Trump, I mean, the last time Trump got elected, um, also during Black Lives Matter, and then also when I was uh, beefing with, you know, some of his homies, they allowed me autonomy <laughs> to just say whatever you I wanted beef to say. with Jeremy's homies? Well, it wasn't a beef. It was just more of a discrepancy, a lack of dis- a lack of respect on, on their I behalf. I don't know about this beef. You don't know about it. It doesn't okay. matter. But I was allowed time and space, and I wasn't reprimanded for speaking my mind very, very adamantly, and mm. me and CM Punk sharing that space. So what you're saying is now creative freedom is a good thing. But when I, I do it, it's... No, no, no. When you do it, you said you allow... 
you know, you you dictate, you disseminate your will on <laughs> dictator. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's Trumpish. You know what I mean? Oh, so now 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 I'm Trumpish. I didn't know. I don't say you. I say it's. <laughs> but I appreciate you, King. Shout out to uh, CM Punk. Shout out to the whole Netflix team. Netflix is coming. I mean, I'm, I'm a man documentary. If you check some bro, of that out, yeah. I'm about to watch that this week. That's on the. That's I'm, on the I'm, watch I'm list. Up, I did the first five episodes. I'm is it crazy? The, it's good. It's good. Did I mean, people. I heard people say like, you know, I'm an old school wrestling fan. Like you said, you're more modern day. I don't know about who's really going on right now in wrestling, other than like. Dusty Rose's fucking kid is like supposed to be the champion or some shit, right? Like Dusty Rose's yes, kid. His, yeah. Yes, his name is but, Cody um, Rhodes. This is my era of wrestling. And like, yeah, I mean, I heard hardcore fans say, well, there's nothing new here. I know all these stories. But I think even the ones that you do know, like, you know, about Montreal screw job and those kind of things, it's still very well done. So that the casual, it, it draws the casual fans in that may not be as aware of all these things. And it's just very well done. Very well, right well done. now it's a full production. Like everyone knows it's scripted and they're not relying on what we call kayfabe. Or yep. like the fourth it's wall. All about and stuff like that. Yep. So there were now it's all about storytelling and I think it's really, really, really good. It's the best it's been in, in a decade since the post McMahon era. He's on current, current currently what it is gotcha. with Triple H taking over and running creative. I think be seeing all the behind the scenes and seeing the pyro and the storylines and stuff like that. Also, you got two black women as WWE women's champions right now. And I think like it's just a different era. And then also another way, again, parallel to hip hop, Jeremy Heck. Um, you can't fake ticket sales. Yeah, all their ten pole events are going to two day events now. WrestleMania is now two day event. Mm, yep. Uh, SummerSlam is now two day event. They oh, SummerSlam is two day. They event. They just announced it with Cardi B. It's going to be at MetLife Stadium. Um, yep. Cardi B just did a whole thing on on X earlier today, literally um, announcing SummerSlam being a two day event. So these things are now they're just getting bigger. You can't fake hard ticket sales. Yeah. If you do a football arena two days in a row, you can't. There's no way to fake that. There's no way to bot that. You know what I mean? So I think it's important. So shout out to uh, again Charday and the Netflix yeah. team. Monday Night Raw is coming to Netflix in January. It's going to be epic. Yeah, it's going to change the landscape of how we consume content. You know, Triple H is my goat. That's one. Of my, that's my favorite. Really, wrestler. that's yeah. interesting. The game. I love. I love that for you, Elliot Wilson. White Who's man your being favorite? your savior. Who's your greatest wrestler? Is CM Punk the goat? Not no, CM Punk's not the goat. The goat is Take the it rock. Oh, the rock? Yeah. Little Stone Cold? See, he was second. The goat is the rock. It's not even close. Well, I think Triple H is the man because he had the feud against both of those guys. Bro, the rock literally changed the entire landscape of professional wrestling. The rock is bigger than Hulk Hogan. And Hulk Hogan that's was crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy? Oh, we're yeah. not gonna do this. Only <laughs> only one wrestler has a Kendrick reference, though. To my knowledge. Who? Sweet chin music. Shawn Michaels is a legend, but he's not the GOAT. I'm just saying, the only one <laughs> has has infiltrated uh, hip-hop's greatest battle. Okay, well, salute to them guys. But yeah. But, but also, speaking of hip-hop's greatest battle, uh, Elliot was reminiscing on his good times with the two guys. At, as, no, no, as, I, got, as, I got a little emotional. As nothing was the same. Oh, go figure. It was the... Yeah, had, <laughs> go had, figure. It was the It was the anniversary of the Nothing Was the Same album, which is my personal favorite uh, Drake album. Let me see what's on that album. <laughs> you haven't heard it in a while? 2013? No, I haven't listened to it. In and then two, Tuscan Leather is a hell of an album. intro. Amazing intro. Drake's best Hold album. Hold on, we're coming home. Is it Drake's best album? I think so. Wow. I think so. And he said it in a rap yeah. right interview. So what happens with that is, hey, I have a, a crown interview I did at the time, which obviously the whole Kendrick Lamar control part was going on during that. Um, and then the rap radar interview, he talked about how Drake admitted that, that he thinks that is his best body of work. So of course, I get all those clips are gonna come up through my timeline of people ripping parts of those things. And yeah, it got me in my emotions a little bit, you know, what things were good. And then I was like, let me take them back even further with me and Kendrick. Because that was the interview I did at South by Southwest in 2012, which was sort of the precursor to the crown, that I yeah. could do these live interviews in front of a crowd. So, And it's funny how, like, a posture, like, they both had their arms on my shoulder. You know, <laughs> it's tender time, man. It's tough to did, you, did you think about reaching out somehow? The pain, the pain. Sorry, Jeffrey. Give me a moment, man. Okay, Jesus yeah, Christ. take a moment. Nah. There we go. Yeah. That's Cap. What's Cap? It's, the, it's not the Gold album? No. Of take Drake's catalog? Not out of the catalog. Views? Views? I'm going to go. <laughs> More Life? Nah. Take care. You're a take care kind of guy? Yeah. I'm it's not, between take care yeah, and nothing was I'm, the same. I'm not mad at that. The only reason I think nothing was the same is better is because I think it was more concise. I think take care ran a little long. Even though I wouldn't say there's too many skips on, on take care. Nothing it is was too the many same. goddamn songs. It's 20 songs. That's what I'm saying. Like, too many songs. Like even with without the deluxe, it's 13 on nothing was the same. And both deluxe songs are really good. 
Uh, the only skip I have on there, I think, is 305 to my city. Me too. I hate 305 okay, to my I city. I don't like that song. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I still think you can have a classic with a skip because I still think yeah. Graduation is a classic. What was the one outcast? The famous album? Yeah, well, Ma- Mamacita. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but it is great. I mean, at that time when you were talking to him, uh, that was right before it came out, right? Or it just dropped that day? Yeah, yeah. No, it was uh, coming out. Yeah, it just, it just came out. I'm trying to remember. It was about, no, it was going to come, because records came out Tuesdays then. Yeah. We did the interview on a Sunday. It was about to come out. Did he yeah. feel like at that time it was his best project so far? Do you feel like, did he have that aura of this is? Just felt, he felt confident. Also, you got to remember, he's coming back after the challenges. Good Kid, Mad City is running shit, right? So he's coming back with his album, because Good Kid, Mad City was 2012, right? Yeah. So I think he took on the challenge of that. Like, there was, to me, an unspoken competitive thing going on right there, where Kendrick was probably the top guy at that time when Good Kid dropped, right? So then here comes Drake again. With his album, so I think he felt confident that this was like a really strong body of work. I mean, it was it was the, the live interview was crazy because we had like nine. It was the biggest one I had done so far. It was like nine hundred people, a thousand people. This NYU kind of auditorium, and it was just it was loud as fuck. That's why the whole control moment was so weird because it was you could feel the crowd's energy. So it just had this like excitement of like this is the guy right now. It's a very anticipated album. I think start, yeah, started from the bottom was already mm-hmm. out, so that was making noise. And hold on, I'm getting hold on. I'm going home. Yep. It was already out. So, yeah, it was a big buzz at the time. So Yeah, this it's crazy. Uh, These pictures are from the same year? No, that's Kendrick's 2012 and Drake's 2013. My bad. Go ahead. No, no, you can. I was just going to say my, my guy, Overtime Dylan, uh, posted this theory last year that I, I think resurfaced because of the anniversary, but how the album was actually supposed to be in reverse. And a lot of people, you know, say Kendrick, Kendrick does all these things, but Drake does have some of these things where there's Easter eggs in the album where if you listen in reverse, it makes sense. Like at the beginning of Pound Cake, he says, we hope you guys enjoy listening to the album as much as we did making it. Mm. And then on Tuscan Leather, he says, how much time uh, is this guy spending on the intro? You see what I did there? Uh, And if you look at Memento, where he references that in the song, that was played in reverse. So it's cool to think okay. about the whole album in that order. Let's I like it better the other way around, but yeah. it is cool that it goes both. Let's ways. credit forty two. Should I was also yeah 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 them 40, both the, cooking the up mastermind. Nice work, yeah. Um, also speaking of started from the bottom, we've had some more uh, Kendrick Easter eggs potentially revealed by internet detectives this week. Um, TikTok detectives. TikTok detective. So uh, the guy on YouTube, his name is The Ville, I believe. He he has a, a great YouTube channel, really under the radar, and he kind of finds these Easter eggs and goes through s- some theories. But the theory here was 616 in LA, which I said on the first episode is going to be the most important song in this in this beef. I said it's going to continue to have layers that unravel, and we keep seeing it. So 616 is also the name of a song by Mike Zombie. Okay, it was released in 2014. The song is about him partying with his friends as teenagers in high school. And the address was 616, of the place that Mike was partying, okay? Now, on the song 616 in LA, at the end, Kendrick makes a Michael Jackson reference when he says, uh, before you think you were alone, uh, ask, ask what Mike, what would, Mike do. would do, ask right? Ask what Mike would do. You are alone. Yeah. Before you, you figure alone. that you're not alone, ask what Mike would do. So a lot of people are thinking this is a double or quadruple entendre at this point where it could be asking what Mike Zombie would do. Now, I don't personally, I know Mike, I know uh, Marissa Mendes, who, who's close with Mike, she tweeted right away, actually, I refound her tweet. The day that this dropped, she said, I think this is a reference to Mike Zombie. But I don't think he's the mole. Some people are saying he's the mole. I do not think that. I did reach out to Mike. I don't think he's the mole or had any information because he's not close with Drake. After Drake signed him to OVO, uh, for the started for the bottom beat, which Future actually is credited. Future has an interview where he said, he was in the studio with Drake. He came up with Started from the Bottom. And Drake said, oh, I like that. I'm going to use that as a hook. So yeah, I he, would think, tell the, he would tell the engineer, yo, Started from the Bottom. Yeah. You heard him say it like talking. And, you know? and he took it. So I don't think Mike wrote it. I'm not crediting Mike with that. But there is something reference-wise here that that connects it. I don't know if he's saying just like, watch who's around you. I know more. And it's just like another, like, Drake asked him for quadruple entendres. Maybe he's just giving him one. Uh, but then there's also this hilarious thing where on Mike's Instagram recently, he said... He had a, a yacht party at Marina Del Rey. And if you know the first lyric on uh, Kendrick's 616 in L.A., he said, uh, off-white sun seeker at the marina. 
and it's about buying yachts when he gets the fever. So I don't think that those things are connected, but all of this is just kind of crazy. But any any thoughts on on the uh, the new Easter eggs? Uh, is any of this plausible? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Elliot? I just, I just saw the girl on TikTok, the TikTok detective girl, and I thought that was cute where she was just trying to be like, <laughs> you know, she was she was all like, 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 <laughs> playful with it. Like, I, I don't know, man. At this point, I don't even care anymore. Like, I just think that song is a song. I mean, it, it can imply different ways. I think rappers love, you know, I don't quadruple quadruple entendres. They lo love at least double entendres yeah. and love play with words. And I think that, yeah, it's a nod to a lot of things. But I think it's more about the Michael Jackson reference to me than yeah. Mike Zombie to me. Any thoughts? Keep digging. Okay. All right. I, I still, there's a couple things on that song. Dig it in the crates. We still don't know what the intro sound means. That That's confusing to people. And and then we still don't really know who the people around him, if any, uh, were, were not to be trusted. Um, but that's that. I don't, I don't necessarily, <clears throat> I, I like the, I like the whole lore of it all, but I'm, I don't give a fuck at this point. Like, I just don't like, it's just, bro, it's, well, you know, he wore this shirt in the Not Like Us video, and then it had this on it. It did. And if you go back and look at Good Kid, Mad City, <laughs> he's been planning this shit since then. It's like, hey, you never know. I, I just what think, is what's the dirt thing? What's the dirt break? I, I, I did, I did uh, message. I did message. What's the dirt? He what is he, what's the dirt thing? He That's said a, he said time was, like this. He said he was gonna look into it because we forgave him. Now he squashed to be for Company Man, right? He's back in the fold. Yeah. So so I, I mean, this is, this is real like hip hop media insider stuff. But uh, what's the dirt? Who has a channel? That kind of blew up during the Kendrick Drake battle. They liked his uh, 616 mm -hmm. breakdown, yeah, right? Yeah, it got like a million views. Okay. And he did a, a breakdown of Family Matters that didn't receive the same love uh, back. There was a lot of uh, a lot of criticism, specifically over some things that he said, where he kind of crossed the 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 racial and cultural lines for some things that he probably just shouldn't have said out loud. He said or Drake have... said the N word 37 times because Drake is 37 years old. Exactly. And people are like, that's the craziest thing I've ever seen. That is wild. So Justin Nigga, Hunt. I said it 37 times. <laughs> so Justin Hunt, who actually I, I credit as being responsible for most of what I do because he created Hip Hop DX's YouTube OG, channel. Yep. OG he, DX. OG. He's he's one of the most respected journalists. Like I, I told him to his face, like, you know, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing without him. And he critiqued what's the dirt and basically said, um, you know. That that theory he brought up and a couple others, he said, you know, some things just aren't for you to talk about. He was pretty respectful, very respectful in how he dissected it. But he said, you know, he was critical. And what's the dirt being emotional at that moment and get, receiving a lot of hate crashed out on Twitter and made like a 12 minute video about it. And he basically said, like, he kind of insulted Justin and made a couple comments that I was like, bro, like that what? a white man in hip hop should never make. That a white man in hip hop should never <laughs> what did he make. Say? He, he What did he say? Ed? He said, uh. <laughs> Justin said that he never used the N-word in his family growing up. And what's the dirt said, I can tell. Which, to me, crazy. So, I, I you know, they did end up squashing it. Uh, Justin. He apologized. Just, for yeah, he apologized. He took accountability. accountability. Justin responded. He said they talked offline. And Justin did a kind of euphoria-like breakdown of what's the dirt and gave him 30 minutes. And uh, he actually mentioned me at the end of the, the breakdown uh, saying that. Did he bleed him? He bled him. <laughs> he bled him. All right, bet. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. I, I mean, I, I made a video talking about being being white in hip hop, and there's certain things that I just think you should never touch. And some things aren't for us to touch. Some things aren't for us to comment on. Some things aren't for us to understand. And there's certain things that just because you love the culture and you're passionate about it doesn't mean you are of the culture. West or Coast. You are born into. It. Shout out to my guy Jay Hunt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd rather hear about what Ja Rule thinks more so than what's the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> what does Ja Rule think at a time yeah, like what, this? What does he think right now? <laughs> so is, is what's the dirt gonna finish? Because he only he's only up to Family Matters. He's like, how many songs behind? He's still There's gotta do two more Meet songs. the Grams, not like us. Are we get, so are we getting those videos? I, I told him take a break from Twitter, but I still he think he should do the the Meet the Gram uh, breakdown. He clearly is passionate about. It. He clearly loves it. This is a learning experience to take accountability from. Some people might not want to hear from him, and that's cool. But I, I think. You know, from from my perspective, it's still worth doing what you do and using the le the lessons you just learned and being able to show them publicly. That's should we I'm should saying. we do that? Should we rank the uh, the diss songs? Because do, do you subscribe to the theory that Family Matters is the better song? Didn't you rank all the diss songs already? 
I didn't. I think do, on episode one do. we kind of no. Did, Ellie has a whole list. No, know? I didn't. Did I? No. I think because I think not like us is no. The, you is did the best greatest song. diss songs of all time. No, oh, no, yeah, no. I'm did. saying the no the Drake Kendrick records. But those just are in as there. records. No, but just as records. Oh, separate. Yeah, separate. But yeah, I, I think Not Like Us is the greatest record of that. But every, the the cool thing is to say, Family Matters if you're a Drake fan or Euphoria if you're a Kendrick fan. But to me, Not Like Us is the greatest diss song now. It's a classic record. Like, why don't you just say Not Like Us is the best record of the of the battle? It is. I think it is too. But but you hit feel me right? I you listen know what I mean? to I Euphoria say, every day though. They say Euphoria is the best record if you're a Kendrick fan. You wake up with it every day. You play Euphoria every day. What what time is it? It's like, just so good. What's your like? What's what setting do you <laughs> so listen good. to Euphoria? Um, it's so good. So on the, in te, in the car in the Teslas they have a one. It's a zero to eleven volume. Yeah, I listen to it at ten. At, but every time you drive. Yeah. So it gets in. Euphoria starts playing. Your superpowers mean no. Love. It goes oh, you pissed up. Oh yeah. Up. Euphoria. <laughs> Okay, so here's to break it down. Push ups came out, Drake push ups. Are we counting like that? 413. In... Like that is not a diss song. Okay, okay. We're not counting this song. Okay. Then the Tell Made Freestyle came out. Then Euphoria, then 616 in LA, Family Matters, Beat the Gramps, Not Like Us, and The Hard Part Six. So my order is Not Like Us, Family Matters, Euphoria, Push Ups. No, I'm not, I put 616 in LA above Push Ups. I'm sorry. Meet the Gramps, Tell and Made, and The Hard Part Six. When did Push Ups come out? Push Ups came out. April 13th. I haven't listened to it since April 14th. <laughs> you only heard one time? One time? Like White Cliff, White Cliff says? One, one time. time? You've only played push ups one time. I played it three times. Two the first day and one after that. Wh which rec are the, any of these records on radio rotation right now? Besides Not Like Us? I used to hear push ups. Euphoria is on the radio. Not actually, like I have the, uh, the media base if you want to know. Yes, let's do let's it. I actually Explain have to the people are. what media base is. Okay, so media know. base is basically the national system for radio spins. And I'm actually going to allow Jeremy Hecht to tell you what the number one song is across all formats on honor. on radio is. Jeremy Hecht. Better be Glorilla. I just if it ain't Glorilla, we riot. This. If it ain't I'm Glorilla, reading. we riot. You know what I <laughs> mean? Okay. So Jeremy Hecht, see that? What's the number one song at radio? Mr. Duckworth. Kendrick Lamar, okay. not like us. All right, now scroll over. Look it. Let me see. I want you to say. I want you to show this to the people, just so that people don't think that I'm. <laughs> He's I'm always biased. having you decode something. So look, be. see where it says at the top. It says spins, right? Yeah. And then it says what? What initials does it stand, does it say? T W. That stands for this week. How many spins this week? Eighteen thousand eight hundred thirty-nine. Ooh. And this is. Uh, this is radio. This, this is radio. They not just like LA, us. Though, or nationally? No. This is not just L A. Okay. So. With the horrible clean edit of the and song. And this is all, just so you guys know, this is all radio because there was pop songs on there, yeah, right? So this that, is yeah, you like, can say other songs is on here. Like, dun, 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 dun. This is so this is top, top 40. This is top 150 songs across alternative rock, rhythmic, top 40, and urban radio formats. You can read the top five uh, artists on there if you want. Okay, top five, we have Kendrick Lamar, number one, not like us. Number two, Tommy Richmond, Million Dollar Baby. Number three, Billie Eilish, Birds of a Feather, great tune. Number four, Sabrina Carpenter, Espresso. Number five, Sabrina Carpenter, please, please, please. What do we think of Tommy Richmond not putting his two big records on his album? I think it's a stupid ass mistake. Right? What's Shout it? out to Tommy Richmond, though. That's not my concern. <laughs> um, I like it. Why is he doing it? It's so bold. I respect it. I don't, I don't no, you agree don't. with it. So, no, I, I, I respect it. Why? I respect it. Because it's unconventional. He's trying to... I think he's... I actually think... It, but it's kind of rude in what we kind of said earlier. I think he, as a white dude, it's like he doesn't want to feel like he's trying to take advantage of, of the system. He, think, he thinks he's very talented. He wants art to be judged. He doesn't want this feeling world. You're just, you're just making, making this about my hit records. Like, I have a whole art piece that may not fit chronologically these songs and this album structure, I want you to respect me as an artist. Like, I, I want you to view me as not just some person outside of the culture that's just trying to make these hit records and come in and out. So I get the idea of that in that sense of it, but I do think strategically, it's, I would still put them at the end of the album as like yeah, deluxe bonus. songs or bonus the songs or something like that. I would not do it. That's what I was going to say, because I feel like it's it's a case by case basis. It depends on the purpose. If you're just going for album sales, you're going to want to have those songs on. Every big album, for the most part, that sells like crazy numbers, had a massive single on it beforehand. Hotline Bling was on Views as the number two song in the world, which later became, I think it became the number one song after Adele. But it was a huge hit 
and it was as the bonus track on views. Now, if you take that off and you just say it doesn't fit the album order, the album sales don't go as high. But I will say, I remember growing up listening to albums and hearing the single and skipping every time because I overheard it. I was mm, It was already sense. overplayed. It's in the middle. It usually didn't fit the concept that they had. They made it specifically. Even like Logic had an album where at the intro to the single on the album, he said, this song was made specifically for the radio. And they input it. It's like, okay, it kind of fits, but not really. I respect it if it's not a part of the art and it doesn't make sense. But if you're like, you're probably about to say like, if you want some sales and you're, and you want to, you know, get the return on investment that you had for this specific project, you would probably want to put it on, but I respect it as an artist. Who is Tommy Richmond signed to? What label is he signed to? Uh, Pulse. Pulse okay. Music Group. Um, we're going to, we're going we to revisit this conversation when the album come out. Okay. Tonight or yeah, tonight. When the let's let's we can we'll we'll coming out tonight. Yeah, we'll, I think so. We'll, we'll we'll Taping this, this on Thursdays, and we'll give this album one to two weeks, and then we're gonna revisit this conversation. Okay. I love people who want to get in the music industry and don't participate in the industry. I love to see the whole thing play out. It's amazing to me. Is what do you mean? You you think he's not playing the industry game? I'm saying that. I think that the misconception of the music industry is rampant it's widespread and people don't understand how it works mm -hmm. so they get in and then they do they want to run their own program and i'm like okay i get it that's cool but there's still a system of things and they, they work a certain way for a certain reason there's a reason why the labels want a single on your album to sell the album because the average consumer not people who like us but the average consumer is looking for that song and they find they discover your music through that song yeah why would you not give the people the best opportunity to discover your music through a song that's a widespread hit? I mean, that's a fair point. It's like, I guess we're so insider that there's people who, with music discovery, want to find it. And they, they are looking, oh, this isn't on the album. I'm not going to buy it. Same thing, I guess, at the concert, right? It's like there's certain bands that want to be super artistic well, and the, not the, play. Who doesn't play their yeah, song, Yeah, not right? play yeah. their hit. Like, I think it was... Uh, I think it was James Blake, I want to say, when he had the song You're Beautiful. He would play it first. He would open the show with it and then go, all right, if that's what you came for, you can leave. And then, like, continue <laughs> to play his show. So I, I get what you're saying. I mean, that's pe I actually don't respect that. I don't respect people who make fun of their own success. Because without that record, you wouldn't yeah. be here. And the people wouldn't. So the people, so when, like, I had this conversation one day, one time with YG, and he didn't want to do Tooted and Booted. I'm like, you're going to do Tooted and Booted. It's 400 girls in here. Yeah. You're going to do the record. You know I mean? <laughs> like, you can't you can't shun the thing that brought you success. Yeah. To me, that's... But that's, artists love to do that. That's being yeah. ungrateful, in my in my humble opinion. It's the artist's curse. You, you're you always focused on what you want to do next when the people haven't necessarily moved on from what you've done. It ain't even about the people moving on. It's just about being... I'm a, I'm, I consume your music, right? If I stream Million Dollar Baby or Devil is a Lie or whatever I'm streaming, that means that I'm not streaming something else. Mm. So mm -hmm. by, by our attention is currency. And it's flooded market right and now. And so you're <laughs> getting my currency, right? So you should be happy and, and grateful that you're receiving my currency. Now I'd be like, well, fuck them two records. So what you mean, bro? I wouldn't know you without these records. To me, it's just highly, it's yeah. just extremely ungrateful. And time will tell. It's, time will yeah. tell. Oh, we're we gonna have this yeah, conversation we can re, again. We can revisit. Yeah, <laughs> People, hey, he, he wouldn't be. He ain't gonna be the first person to fuck around and find out. There's been quite a few. It's been a year of fucking around and finding out. It's been a whole year of people <laughs> fucking around and finding the fuck out. <laughs> the whole year of it. He, Cat Williams kicked it off. He started that off and it's been off. ever since. Where is Cat? He's, he's probably just chilling, watching everything right now. Laughing just, at motherfuckers. Yeah. And, you know, it <laughs> is it's like, it is. I told you so. <laughs> uh, somebody who decided not to participate in any of this madness bowed out. Mr. Uh, Jermaine Cole. Mr. J. Cole. But he's uh, back. But he is Guest back. Guest feature master. Guest feature on Daylight's new song, uh, where he says on the song, uh, pondering about being the greatest. And it's funny because this conversation keeps happening, right? Where some people say J. Cole's music's hitting differently. There are, I've seen a lot of comments like, this is cool. You're rapping at a high level, but you can't be the greatest after you bowed out of that battle. And then I see a lot of people saying, doesn't matter. J. Cole is the best rapper out of those three in terms of his flows and his tones. I think he's rapping at some of his best 
on this feature. Yeah, but what do you guys he's think? He's found his pocket where like his guest versus feel like That's I think he has we have that with Hove, we had that with Andre Three Thousand, where it's like his guest features feel like this sprawling like canvas where he just does these intricate rhyme schemes and it's just like oh my god he's like the best and i think he's getting that back the bandwagon people are back on the bandwagon now because of it like and i think that that's what people want they don't want grippy from him even though i enjoy grippy <laughs> <laughs> grippy now they want the sprawling rhyme scheme uh j cole rhyming over your head type shit i remember uh rob markman had a great breakdown of yeah. the michael jackson scheme in the verse i mean it's a great verse i mean he's found his pocket with that and i think that yeah you think it's, it's starting to really build momentum back in his favor leading up to whatever the fall off is going to be. So to me, I'm really just focused on that. I wonder how does that work when it's time for his records and what stance he's taking there and how much of it is going to be reflective of these recent events. Is he going to address some of the theories yeah. that we've had about, you know, who was asked to be on whose records and insider stuff? Is it, or is it going to be just a whole different direction? But I think Cole, you know, Cole is up there. And I think that, yeah, those was moments you feel like, well, Damn, is he still like back in the conversation with Drake and Kendrick and who's the best right now in terms of just like rapper and career? What do you think? Is what go back in the conversation? Can he can he be back in the conversation with what happened on the Dreamboat? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think he. I mean, I don't think he cares. And maybe he doesn't. I don't think he cares, bro. Maybe he doesn't. Cole is riding his bike. Doing features on the beach. He enjoys a bike ride. I mean, he, it seemed like he did. That's that was what was weird to me. It seemed like he did care, but maybe he he got to he got into it and he's like, no, no, no. I I, I thought I cared because that happens sometimes. You think you care about something, you get there and you're like, this this actually wasn't. I think Cole right now is in character. My delete mm. later is out of character. Mm. Mm. That's fair. You get what I'm saying? Like I think when he did that, he was out, he was beside him. He was outside of himself. I think he's back to himself, and this is who he is, and this is who he's always been. He's not, he's not really, he's always been like, hey, we're the big three, like we're yeah, the, yeah. like everybody type deal. I don't think he's ever been me, me, me. He's, he does want to be the greatest rapper. Yeah. Yeah. I think he has those aspirations, but I don't think he cares enough to do what it's going to take to be that. He doesn't want to tear you down. Like I couldn't, you couldn't even imagine him, the levels that Drake and Kendrick went with his battle, I couldn't even imagine Cole. No saying these type of things or doing these sort of things or researching this or implying that somebody did this. Like, I, I couldn't even see him doing it. He felt bad about saying an album was bad. He's <laughs> like, I didn't mean that, man, man. man we all like, I like that, that album. album. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah, that yeah, record. Yeah, yeah. What'd he say? Your last shit was... What'd he say? Yeah, he said they were falling asleep to it or something. He, he said your last shit was 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 average. bricked or trash. And then, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He didn't even sound right. Yeah, no, it didn't. Shout out to Cole. I actually, I so Daylight had sent me the song right when it dropped. So I told him we got to call him. I have some questions about about Cole and about Kendrick, honestly. Call but, Daylight. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna call Daylight. Is this our first guest? This our, well, it's our first, <laughs> it's technically a, uh, a uh, call in. Let's see. Mr. Daylight, you are live on the bigger picture with DJ Head, Jeremy Hecht, and Elliot put Wilson. The, top of the mic, bro. Okay, there top of the There you go. We are live. Uh, so we were just yeah. talking about the the new song. Congrat congratulations on it. It's yes, it's sir. we all loved it. We all love the verses. Is it is it coming to the DSPs? It's on the way right now. Okay, right we need now. it on turn the DSPs, my guy. I can't turn up. Right now, give, give about a day or two. Okay, okay. a couple of days to DSPs. Uh, I wanted to know when that song was recorded. When did? Because you said you were in the studio and Cole. When you were talking to Justin, shout out to Justin Hunt. You said uh, you were in the studio. You couldn't find Cole. He recorded it the same day. What time period was that? Uh, it was probably about, uh, about eight months ago. Eight, okay. Nine months ago. So this is before any of the back and forth. Oh yeah, this is way before the back and forth. So okay. To all the people that that's tying these references into X Y Z, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> You're like, I don't want any part was of Was it around the same time as the, the joining the Mike Delete Later project? Was it around the same time as Mike Delete Later? Um, no, this was before that, too. Oh, this was even wow, before Oh, yeah, just in the tuck. Okay. So you were waiting for the right time. Oh, yeah. You know, no, you can't just push the nukes whenever, you know, you got you to gotta drop it when it's right, you know? How did he get Cole on the joint? How does he... Got yeah, two joints now with him. Yeah, what 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 is your working relationship with Cole? Like, how did you guys connect initially? Um, so actually, uh, I've been knowing Cole for about six, seven years now. So, um, I went to uh, I went to North Carolina to work with Night Wonder, 
And uh, for those who don't know, like my right hand man, Itchy Banda, aka Willie B, who produced O3 Adolescence. Mm. Um, when we was out there working with Night Wonder, you know, Itchy was basically like, yo, let's link up with Cole while we out here. So um, I met Cole like about six, seven years ago. And, uh, you know, he heard my first album, which is Let There Be Light. He was rocking with it and stuff. And uh, we just kept in contact throughout then. And, you know, throughout the days, like, I, let's say like six years, like, I never reached out to him and asked him for nothing. Like, um, and then, you know, how we actually start working together, it started with the Pi record. You know, I had the, uh, I did the Pi record with Ab Soul. And um, I just sent it to him, you know, and I was like, yo, it'll be dope if you did like the intro, like on some like, yo, you know, Daylight to Ab Soul, man, them two of my favorites. I just wanted like an intro, like a skit intro. And um, he actually didn't reply to me. Like he left me on red for like a couple of days. And then out of nowhere, he sent the pie verse back. And that was kind of like the beginning of our relationship, like our musical relationship. He's like, that's my record. <laughs> 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 Big bank take Lil Bank. Like I told Justin, um, I think I think where our where our relationship stemmed from or where it's stemming at right now is I think like when when we're working together, Cole could just write freely from like a rapper standpoint. He ain't gotta think about all the other stuff. So I think that's kinda like that's like the basis of our friendship at this point. Like, yo, remember when you had your like your your high school rap buddy where you could just like, yo, cut on the beat, let's just go off. Like I think that's kind of what it is at this point. Like we just enjoy from the creation aspect, it's just dope to get in there and, and just go off. So. So, you don't, so you don't mind him trying to murder you in your own shit? You don't mind? It's, it's all good. It's competitive. Yo. Oh, you cut, you cut out for a sec. Hey, yo, technology. Hey, Damn. yo. Technology. Well, he doesn't answer. I did want to ask him about the... Uh... The Kendrick thing too. What's the Kendrick thing? Unlike that, there was a reference. I'll just say if he comes back. But yeah, it's interesting because I, I I wanted to hear his take on if he thinks Cole can be considered the greatest after <laughs> that, especially as a battle rapper. Um, but yeah, so I feel like Trey the Truth also said about Cole that we should expect the unexpected. I think he said be scared or something like that or you know when you hear it it's it's going to surprise everyone i don't know i don't know what when you hear expect. what the fall off man is uh, the fall off the most anticipated album uh, no this year you know what the most anticipated <laughs> besides besides <laughs> mr duckworth i'm Woke just saying up, looking for we, the broccoli we, god damn okay <laughs> i'm just saying I'm, so there is a kendrick album we're gonna have an album. I, don't, I don't believe it's a kendrick album until it's a kendrick album that's how i look at it what does that mean the I mean, guy doesn't play the game. It's like we don't. He, he doesn't have to do an album. He might not do an album. You never so, know. With this so he's never gonna do another album. I mean, I'm sure he will one day. But is he gonna do it like with the? I hope he does it. When's the fall off? The dropping? industry way with the Super Bowl and the whole rollout. When's the fall off dropping? We don't have a date. It's been five years in the making. So then, what the fuck are we talking about? Well, I think <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Most anticipated. I think the lane is open for that to be the closer of the year because Kendrick will probably drop early next year. So I'm saying, in that sense, it's like. The most anticipated this year, I guess I would look at it. I think so. J. Cole. I would love him to Kendrick uh, most anticipated overall. I would love for Cole to go ahead and hurry up. Just get to know. it. No, no, we want November, December, wait, fourth wait, wait. quarter, man. Industry. So do you do you think do you think then there's maybe some waiting on like that's gonna drop first and then we might get something else? I just really want Cole to just get to it so that way. You could clear get, the lane, clear the landscape. Just get it. So basically, we're saying everybody, whatever you're trying to drop, get it now. Cause I'm not saying the that, that I'm, might not, be coming. I'm not saying none of that. I'm just saying that me speaking for myself, okay. I would like Cole to just get his, get his, get his, <laughs> get his out the way. Let him do, you know, announce the tour, do all the things. You know, what I'm saying? I, I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and. Sometimes you gotta <laughs> get the wind beneath your wings, partner. Yeah, do you, champ? Well, uh, we, we shall see. He's rapping at so a high level. So stop these guest features. Get back to just you, you. Get back to himself. No, I mean now. Here's here's my question about this record. Did Cole smoke daylight? That's what I was asking. We got cut off. I was saying, did he murder him on his own shit right there? You know what I mean? I don't. I don't think he murdered him, but I definitely think he had the better verse. I think it was. It, it, it almost yeah. reminded me of like when Wale and Cole rap together. Wale is very like 
he's lyrical in a different sense he's yeah. very compact he's like it's kind of like jay where like you have to rip apart the bars a little bit same with daylight it's like he set it up for cole whereas on renegade i think jay-z had a great verse but m's verse came in like, even though he had double entendres it's much easier to digest so i think like cole who, had that same who did they um renegade verse first so, so that was, was already done with Royce to five mm -hmm. nine was, was already eminem didn't change his verses yeah. That the demo was it was Royce Five Nine's record. At first. Gotcha. Yeah. And I think did Jay have a second verse on on Renegade? Was it? Did he? Yeah. Have, yeah. So I I love when rappers do that when they know they actually had the not as good verse or not the not like you know stand up verse and then they'll go back and put a third verse on after to pad it. Like all right, we need to make sure you hear me after. Like just, that happens a lot actually. Are you accusing Jay Z of padding the books? Uh, I think he now. added some Easy stats now. on there. <laughs> I think he had a success. I mean, he's he's the greatest. I I have him as number one. I have him over M in my in my total. He said out loud. He said Eminem had the better verse there. I don't think okay. that that's controversial. I don't know if he would admit that he put that second verse on because of that reason, but I don't think he put a second verse because of Eminem. Okay, it's kind of egregious. Okay, I'm just saying he did the same thing with Kanye on that one song. On what song? On uh, Never Let You Down or Never did Let he? You Down. Yeah, he came back with a second verse. Remember, and I was like, he's talking about nothing to do with the song. Was yeah, it? but I think that that was just because it was just a random verse. I don't think it was because he wanted to. He knew Ye had a great verse. What you guys take on guest feature outshining that? Like, isn't it? It's supposed to be set up for that, right? Like, you almost you adding somebody to your song because yeah. you hear them on your song. They're gonna add to it. They're gonna you setting them up. It's like an alley oop. But then we then we clown them if the person then shines in the record and say, "Well, this guy took over your record." I think it depends on the purpose. If it's like a song structured as there's a meaning to this song. You really want uh, them to do something specific to tie into a theme or there's a hook that like it matches around. Then you kind of want to be on evil, even playing field because you want the song concept to shine. But if it's like a rap record where it's bars and you know like I'm trying to showcase my skills and I'm passing it to you to showcase your skills, mm -hmm. I think as artists you still, you want you, the guest to shine because you, you're sending it to them, but you still want to have that better verse, I think. But I think, I think you're right. It is set up for them to win. But I, I think it's still ego involved. Yeah. Especially from a rap standpoint, because if you set somebody up and they just blow you out of the water, it's like, <laughs> damn, bro. Yeah. yeah, you didn't have to. You didn't have to spike it like that. <laughs> so I think it's like one of those types of deals. Like they want the they because at the end of the day, if I'm an artist, I put you on my song. I want you to enhance my song. That's why I'm yeah. putting you on yeah. it. And I want the song to be dope, so that way I make more money and cons and people consume the record. Yeah. But I do think there's a certain balance to it because it's like, damn, you did you have to do that? But I think a real artist would appreciate getting smoked in their own song if it benefits the record. Yeah. You know what's funny? Speaking of the record, speaking of that, uh, Tiger Taste went diamond officially. Yeah. I forgot Offset was on that record. I did too. Offset, I thought it, I, Offset was like, yo, that. congrats to me. I'm having a great day. I'm like, wait, what the fuck is he talking about? I just heard I forgot it. he was even on the record. I just heard his feature shout the first time. Shout out to Tiger. Shout out to West Offset. Coast. It's yeah. a win for the West Coast, right? Shout out to the West. Shout out to Ghazi and Nima. <laughs> How did and, you celebrate? And the whole team at Empire. Hold on. Let me hold on. Let me. All right. Let's, let's get it wrong. Uh, my bad. My bad. I so I so. Hold on. Before we okay. go to this, the okay. diamond single, Tiger Taste. I want to shout out to Ghazi. Okay. Ghazi is the CEO of Empire. Yes, sir. Ghazi's my guy. We over a decade in. God, we're in Miami one year. I forgot why we were in Miami. We were on a boat, a very expensive boat, the big, the big one that all that everybody rents out, the big stupid one with the everything. <clears throat> so we're on a boat, and Ghazi says, to, "This is I don't know, I don't know how many years ago. This is like 2014, 2014 ish, something like that. No, 2015, 15, yeah. 2015, 2016 ish. So Ghazi says to me, he's like, "Hey, you know, I'm thinking about signing Tiger. Now, mind you, Tiger hmm. was going through all of the shit with the Jenner girl, right? Yeah, um, all of that shit." Tiger was the most like ugly ducking, uh, ugly duckling in the industry. Like people were making fun of him, memeing him, like talking yeah. shit, right? And he, and he was like, "What you think?" And I'm like, "I mean, Tiger makes hits. He's a he's a hit generator. He makes slaps. Like he's a generating machine. He's like, yeah, I think I'm gonna do it. Like he's like, bro, Tiger still got it. He still sells tickets. He still streams. He still um he can make hit records. I believe in him. I think I'm gonna sign him." Nobody wanted to touch Tiger. Let's be real. It at, at this time yeah. during the Jenner shit, nobody wanted to fuck with him. So Tiger does an independent deal with Empire, right, with Ghazi and Nima, and they catch one. It's called Taste, featuring Offset. 
Okay. Do, do, do. I just can't think not think of Joe Bunsen. I told I told <laughs> Ghazi I think you should do it, right? Because of that, shout out to Ghazi and email everybody, Empire and Gentry and everybody. I got a plaque. You know what I'm saying? All right. I have a taste plaque. So you're about to get a die. You could get a diamond plaque. I have a taste plaque, right? When it went three times platinum, I think. Wow. Because it, it 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 you yeah. know hit out the oh, gate. You need that diamond plaque, kid. Come so on. shout out to Tiger, because Tiger's from the West. He's from here. Yeah. Which part of LA is he officially from? He's from all over. Got you. But he has roots in different places. Okay. So he's you like claim him. he's like Blast. Like Blast doesn't necessarily claim a section, mm -hmm. but he's still from the yeah. general. So he went to the IE for high school. Yeah. It's the, I mean, me same thing for me. I went to five <laughs> elementary schools. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we were homeless. It's just that's how shit go. Anyway, <laughs> um, long story short, I do want to revisit something. I was on the Shade Room Live with a couple of individuals, and I asked a question I thought was a very valid question. And the very valid question was, why do y'all hate the West Coast? Alex, would you please? Why don't y'all like the West? No, I like, okay. Okay. Why do you feel like people don't like you or like the West Coast? Why do you feel that way? Um, it's not even a feeling. It's facts. I guess my issue um, with the West, West Coast. There we is, go. I'm, I'm going I'm to say it. The, my issue with the West Coast is West Coast people like yourself here and people I hear when I'm out, when I'm out in the West. They don't respect Southern rappers. You know what I'm saying? They will say, they will say future trash, thug trash. They will, I mean, go in. And then say, the only people they want to, they, they think is making any good music is Kendrick and artists from the West Coast. And that'd be my issue. And y'all, and y'all music don't be hot enough nationwide to have all that pride. Ooh. I mean, Ooh, okay. <laughs> not like us sounds very West Coast. And it's a record. And it's a record and it hits, but that Southern music is going all around the country and y'all will sit there and say, that's trash. Now, meanwhile, 1300 people listening to this Tiger record and y'all like, oh, that's it. That's the one. No, nah, that's just y'all over there. 1300 <laughs> people can't get a billion streams or make anything go diamond. Diamond. 1300 people is a far reach, a West far Coast. cry from a diamond record. Now, do want to address something that the homie said. He said that we don't respect Southern rappers. Who's on this song, this Diamond song with Tyga? Offset. Offset. Where, where's he from? <laughs> Offset. He is from Atlanta. He's from Atlanta. Oh, okay. And um, his first Diamond record. Right? How many Diamond records did he have prior to this record? I think it's his first, right? It's his first. Bad and Bougie's probably close, but I don't think it's Diamond yet. I think it's his first goal. He was he was emotional. He was giving the acceptance yeah. speech. I was like, first yo. Ever, first ever. I was like, is his record? So, so while the West don't respect Southern rappers, the West put a Southern rapper on his first diamond record. West Coast. I digress. <laughs> wow. Are we underrated as a podcast or as a show because we're looked at as a West Coast based show? Ooh. Absolutely. Damn. Even I, think, I think you're right, actually. No, I am right. Niggas don't like the West Coast. <laughs> Niggas don't like the West Coast. I really understand this. And West I'm Coast fine Wilson. with it. Will you tell the line? With I push the line with it. I've been pushing the line since 2004. So it's always been like this. It's been like this the entire time, Elliot Wilson. Wow. While you was out there running amok, uh, beefing with <laughs> Benzino running and all and that Gotham. good shit over there. Running amok in Gotham. Gotham. Doing all that shit. <laughs> doing the, the magazine covers and, you know, crowning niggas. We was... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We've been out here. Fighting the good fight. The whole time. Do, do you think there is anything valid of West Coast not giving enough respect to Southern artists? Of course, shout out to no. here, but. No. Pull up NBA Young Boys, number one, uh, uh, NBA Young Boys uh, top three markets. That's on the internet. <laughs> right, well, we're going to look. It's on media base. <laughs> Pull up Future's top markets. Oh, we got to talk about Future, yeah. Uh, what are you talking about? That might be on your app. You oh, right, we can do it another yeah. episode. We can we can pull analytics if you want to do that. We can do that. The little homies out here, they fuck with Young Boy. They fuck with Future. Roddy Rich said he didn't listen to Tupac. Thug was his influence. Roddy Rich is part of our big three of our people out here. But I guess he means he probably means media. What do you mean? No, he was talking about people don't respect their. He said media don't respect their. I, I would think so. I don't think no, he's talking about the. That, no, he was though. talking about just West. He said West Coast mm -hmm. guys like yourself, meaning just people who advocate for our music, Honestly. don't respect Southern rappers. That's just not true. What was YG's first major big hit with Jeezy? It's called My Nigga. Wow. My Rich nigga. Homie Kwan 
on the hook. Yeah. With Richard McQuan. Richard McQuan. And I would actually argue the same goes for everywhere else for the West, too. Like, I would say that other markets don't put enough respect on West Coast music as well. I think that that's natural for where you are. We are the number one most hated, and that's fine. It's yeah, we're cool. like the outsiders, right? The West is just its own thing. Well, there's a whole thing that comes along with that that we don't have time for. It don't have nothing to do with hip hop, but we can do that one day if y'all want to. I'd love to hear a little yeah, bit about it right now. It's the Great Migration. There aren't enough black people here to sustain an urban a urban culture. So black people feel disassociated from it because mm. they don't accept Mexicans as part of urban culture. When Mexican, black and brown is hip hop. It originated that way. It's always been black and brown. Shout out to the coyotes. That's just a snippet. <laughs> to be continued. To be continued. Uh, well, but, speaking of Southern rap. Wait, wait, before, before we go to, to future, I made a list of songs that you guys might be surprised are diamond. Oh wow! Okay. I, I didn't just pick all the okay, like, all the rap songs. Okay. There's only 150 songs, right? Crazy that are diamond. And so, diamonds for people know what 10 million, right? 10 million. And that's sold. to me is looked at, that's still looked at as the standard of the of this of a successful song, right? The highest like regard. A smash, a I smash mean, hit. shit, it's hard as hell to get a song a million, let alone 10 times. Tag approved that you can wash away underage women allegations with a great song. <laughs> easy, easy. I'm just saying we, West Coast. We're, Damn. we're very, we're overly. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. You trying what to get is, that gender thing off clean? Here comes Jeremy. I'm not. I'm not. I, it was there was evidence of it. Listen, <laughs> wait, listen. All I'm saying is Drake. I'm just saying with Drake that is the narrative now. But Tyga did it in real life and then had a diamond song and then people are like, oh, it's are cool. you questioning Tyga's taste? That was good. Thank you. That was good. I've been here for a while. Thirty-two good. in. Thirty-two uh, years. He said, "No, no, that was, that was good. That was good." Uh, sometimes you need to act your age and not okay, your girl's age. Okay, what was the most okay. surprising diamond record in your judgment, Jeremy? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to list you some, and then you guys tell me if you were surprised that this was diamond. Uh, Party rock anthem. That's oh, I hate that song. Okay. <laughs> Trap queen, Fetty Wap. Wow, Fetty Wap twenty was twenty fifteen. Fetty, Fetty Wap got a diamond record. Diamond Fetty record. Wap was yeah. running Trap shit. queen. Trap Not queen. even the other one with Drake on it. No, because that wasn't even on stream. No, that was that Monty's was record. That was, that was a fallout. What? That yeah. never came out. Yeah. Hey, listen, keep your eye on the prize. Trap Queen. I see what you did there. Too. I'm better than Elliot. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Hey, 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 hey. We, got a, we got a pun competition. Hey. Okay, because I, I think I can take you both. Okay, what? pause. All right, Bodak Yellow. <laughs> of course, Cardi. Yep. Shout out to Barty Gang. Barty Gang. How about, let's give credit to oh, Kodak Black. Kodak Flocking. Black Flocking. gave the flow. Was an inspiration. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's give credit to Partisan Fontaine. <laughs> I mean, that too. You know party too. party and Cardi. Shout out to, to Julie party. Greenwald. Like, what the fuck are we... You know what I'm saying? Kaiser. You just shout, My shout out everyone with Tyga. You gave a whole list and acceptance to it. Okay, we need... Okay, uh, <laughs> Drip Too Hard. This is my most surprising. Uh, drip, drip, drip Too Hard. Baby and Gunner. Metro? Baby and Gunner. Oh, Drip Too Hard. That that's a rare song that broke both artists yeah. right, at the same time. Took them both to, to the next level. Same thing with level. nothing on you, B.O.B. and Bruno Mars. That's a crazy record too. That we, broke both artists simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And we don't get enough of those pop rap combos anymore. I know because artists don't want success. But mm. let's keep going. <laughs> they don't put their rec hit records on their albums. Okay. Oh wait, Daylight's combo. <laughs> Hello. You you, you want a million dollar finish, baby? Finish Daylight combo or you want to? Here, here, here. Okay. West Coast. Hey, hold on, fool. We hold on one second. Just give me a minute. Yeah. He, are you on the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Just hold on, hold on. All right, hold on. All right, go ahead. Okay, uh, these are diamond songs that you may be surprised about. Uh, Middle Child, J Cole. Really? Yep. That's diamond. Diamond. Uh, I'm gonna need J Cole to celebrate more. I didn't even know he got a post <laughs> or something. Fuck. Is you know what I'm saying? Is that J Cole's best tweet record? or something, nigga? Like, I think that's my favorite J Cole record. It is middle child. It was his his best attempt, I think, at making like a mainstream song that didn't sacrifice anything. Because yeah, it's a it's a big kinda... it's a big single that represents him in an organic way. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's my favorite. Okay, well, let's Pop. finish with let's finish with daylight. Okay, let's okay. We 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 were speaking of uh, of Cole and and middle child going uh going diamond, but we were having this conversation beforehand about whether or not Cole can be considered in the top spot, because I know the verse was recorded before all of this happened, before he bowed out of, of the battle, uh, but there's kind of this conversation going on of whether or not he can be considered in the number one spot with what happened on the Dreamville stage. Do you think that 
rapping ability alone and if this album is a classic, he can still kind of take that throne. Turn him up. I can't believe you're saying that. That's for you. Um Yeah. Um I mean we 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 got a lot of different type of fans now and people listening for other stuff, you know. Some people, some people in this stuff for numbers. Some people in this stuff for uh, the publicity aspect, and some people in it purely based off the simple fact that they want to hear like high level lyricism. So, I think in some people's eyes, he could still win that over. Maybe not everybody, but in some people's eyes, he could still win that over. All right, okay. standing on that. <laughs> hey, hey, light. Do you think that, do you think that, um, okay, so for clarity, you did this song, let's say, how many months ago? Uh, I would say uh, probably like eight months ago. So this song is about eight months old. Okay, so just for people who don't understand the music industry, because we are constantly I'm having music business conversations on this platform, uh, you still have to clear the record when you put it out in order to feature an artist, correct? Correct. Okay, so you have to have clearance from that artist to put the song out. Correct. Okay, so even if you did the song prior to any back and forth or whatever, the artist still has to clear the record. Correct. Okay, so if you <laughs> three times, so if you <laughs> if now if you were to get a song, prosecutor, head. if you were to get a song before, I mean after the back and forth, and could you just put it out without the artist's consent? If you were to get this, if you were to get this verse, if you were to get this verse like last week, could you just put it out without without Cole signing off on it? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not quite sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So because the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of people were saying like, well, you know, Light doesn't have you know the weight to have a a, a Cole feature signed off on and all this other kind of shit like this, or it's not. <laughs> what about that? Bro, I seen some, I seen some shit online. I just wanted to clear that up. <laughs> uh, Fuck online. Fuck them people online. Huh? It's out and it's clear. Well, they were just saying because it's not on DSP and stuff like that. But that, it's coming. It's coming. But I'm just saying, like, you can't just put something out with somebody's name on it without clearing the fucking song. Oh no, 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 no. We uh, it, I, I wasn't gonna put the, the, the song out. I actually got contacted to throw it out now. Okay, somebody reached out to you. They can. So, to make a long story short, it's not on DSPs yet because we chose the. It was like on some let it fly now, like right now stuff. Oh, you know, you know it take a couple of days to get up up there and um, you know what I mean. So they was like, just let it fly right now. Throw it on the tube, let it fly right now. So that's the only reason why it's not on DSPs yet. Got you. Okay, because I just I, and people always tag me when stuff is not on because I'm the one that advocates for people to claim their records. So I just want <laughs> claim I just your wanted, record. I just wanted to clear that up. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, we, we got full clearance for this. Exactly. Okay, this this is this is my last question, and I feel free to be to to avoid or be vague, but there's one thing that I always wondered that people were speculating about, and I wanted to ask you to your face about like that. Okay. So on like that, Kendrick has this one line where he says, Your best work is a light pack. Okay, now there could be no double entendre, but some people speculate that light could be a double entendre referencing you because you had worked with Drake in the past. To what degree, I don't personally know. But did you take that as a reference to you at all? Or, or like when you heard that, did you think that that was? Knowing, knowing Kendrick and how he raps, he's very sneaky. So I don't know if he meant it or not. I, I truthfully don't know. Um, in regards to me working with Drake, I could clear the air right now. Um, oh, this silence is crazy. The bigger picture. We we got we got a room for silence. Oh my god. The bigger picture. Can y'all record? Huh? We're recording. This is on. This is on the record. You are live on the bigger picture. All right. Um. No, I did not write back to back. I just put that out there. I'll leave that in the air. What okay. did you write, though, fool? I won't speak on anything else. 
Oh, you got y'all got to talk to my agents and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right back to back, and that's for the the public. Um, you know, with the public perception, it's like you know, everybody was hitting me up like, "Yo, I think they like wrote back to back." Like I did write back to back. Were, were there ever studio sessions? Now, what I can say, and I'll say this publicly, uh. I may be in some inspiration to the concept of the record. Now, in the midst of that beast, after, uh, you know, Charged Up drop, I most definitely was like, hey, bro, you got to drop some shit back to back. Like, you need you need to run some shit back to back to back to back. And I just kept saying back to back. And then that became, I guess, the idea of the record. Oh, so there was no necessary, it wasn't like pen, pen to pad, like these are the bars, but the conversation could have sparked that yeah. title and the song. Yeah, because I was like, yo, you got to drop back to back. Don't give them no time. Don't give them no time to reply. Like just back to back, like just double up on them. And that, that concept alone turned into like an actual record. Ask them, started from the bottom, ask them if they still cool now. Are, are you and Drake still cool now? Head wants to know. Yeah, I, I just talked to Drake not too long ago. Is he in good spirits? He's always um, in great spirits. I actually, I didn't, I didn't speak to him about none of the stuff that was going on. It was basically about you know a future rap battle. So you and him? No, 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 no. Oh, okay, okay. And, and some other people. Um, I don't want to say the person's name because you know I'm, I'm a big time rapper now. Yeah. I don't mention them little niggas no more. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But um, but not, but not. Uh, I, I again like, um, I'm. I'm more so in a space where everybody's seen what happened publicly. Everybody's seen the war just as well as I've seen it. We all know who won. We know who lost. Let's just move forward. Word. Well, we're excited for the new music. And then you you are kind of TDE-esque. You've been, you know, you said they, in your interview, Justin, you said that they've helped with resources and studio time. Is there an unofficial TDE relationship? Um. So I make this loud and clear, you know, for... Cause I, you know, and I want to highlight this, like, cause somebody was like, "Yo, how the fuck, you know, Dochi don't know who Daylight is?" Like, and I kind of explain that how we work. Like, uh, I'm not a TDE artist. I'm not signed to Top Dog Entertainment. I'm actually under Top Dog Entertainment uh, manager or uh, executive president Punch. I'm under Punch. I'm directly under Punch. And Punch has his own situation and a scenario called a room full of mirrors. So I'm signed directly to Punch. So I'm not necessarily this working like this with clarity. Camp. I'm working directly with Punch. Word. Shout there out to go. Punch. And what's the upcoming project? What's next? So we're looking at top of the year. We're going we're gonna to roll out a few more singles just to get the culture familiar with, you know, Daylight as an artist. A lot of people know what I've done outside of the music world. So, um, you know, now just, just kind of rolling out and getting the, the actual industry world familiar with me as an actual musician and um i do want to give a big shout out to dj head because he has most definitely gave me some amazing gems in regarding to recording music and records and the future of my project i took a lot of things he said into consideration hmm. with making music so look at you shout out to head for that. a and r head ask him what bpm dj head wants to know what bpm you got on that album <laughs> oh, oh, man, I ain't, i'm not even gonna lie we, you know, we we was in the real bappy bag earlier. You know, drag, drag, sixty seven, and you know some some eighties and seventy fives. Man, I, right now I don't think nothing is under a ninety. Is that good? Nothing under ninety. He know what it is. Yeah, he's <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> and then you meant you mentioned that you have uh, some more big features, and you said. Uh, another big three feature is is your quote to some degree. I, I might have been messing that up a little bit. You said something about a big three feature. Is that uh, on the project? It depends on what y'all consider the big three. I got different big threes than, than everybody else. But, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's okay. your big three? Who's my big? Why would I tell you that? Then you're gonna have a uh, you'll have a guess of who it could possibly be. Is Cole in your big three? He's in my newer big three. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll let you get out right, here. Thank we, you, brother. We appreciate your time, and uh, we're looking forward <laughs> to the new music. All right. Peace, brother. Peace. Look at that. Our first well, guest. Exclusive <laughs> exclusive information. I I did not know. I don't was I was that public? I don't think so about the back, back to back. back thing. Yeah. No. I don't. This, but so we, it's funny you talked about Future saying started from the bottom in the studio, and Drake turning that into a song. 
this seems like a very similar story. But, it, I, you know, it's weird because I don't necessarily... Like, that's not, to me, ghost writing. That's inspiration, no, inspiration, you know, for an idea. But I don't know how... Like, how do you look at that if... if Because you've been in studios, right? <laughs> so I'm like, always in the studio. So when you're in the studio... <laughs> He's I'm, A&R and Daylight's new project, man. I, I won't speak for you, but I would assume that there's been times where an artist is making a song and either, you know, whether it be about the BPM or a line or a hook, or maybe you say something, you know you don't look at that rapper differently because you gave an idea and they use it. No, I encourage them to use music. I say that nausea. Music is collaborative. It always has been. We get trash ass music when y'all go in there and boopity boopity boo by yourself. <laughs> you and your whack ass sure. engineer. Yeah, you and your Not fucking, nobody in. You and your homeboy who manage you from, from the neighborhood who pressing DJs to play a record that ain't mixed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just like that doesn't work. That no. doesn't get the song spins. Like, no, bro. Like <laughs> boopity boopity boop by yourself is not gonna get it. <laughs> Hickory Very dickory fair. dock. Head, have you provided any inspiration for certain songs we've heard? Of titles course. of songs. I've, bro, I've, of course. Can you share I've one? Broken records. I don't get credit for. I've contributed to records. I've picked records. All that. I've I've made millions of dollars for people for sure. One hundred percent. I don't do it for that though. That's not why I do it for the credit. I do it because that's my contribution. That's using your gift. That's doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I wish a lot more people would do it. They would use their platform to uplift. <laughs> uh, you did You did tweet some cryptic uh, lyrics. Uh -oh. uh, stay on stream? This week. Uh, I just wanted to know I didn't tell niggas stay on stream this week. No, you didn't. You <laughs> didn't. But, but, still, but still, stay on stream, kings. You gotta stay on stream. All, yeah. you, all you kings and gents, Stay on stream. No, this this week you you tweeted specific lyrics. Um, you said what? You you tweeted specific lyrics saying uh, a pathetic master manipulator. I can smell the tails on you now. Oh, that was because there was a a, a streamer spewing ignorant rhetoric across the internet from his gamer chair. <laughs> well, yeah, but is it a gamer chair if you don't game? <laughs> That's the mm. question. Are you a DJ if you don't DJ? Mm. I'm just asking questions. Just so questions. you're talking about I'm academics. a journalist. I'm asking questions. Talking about big acting. No, about I'm journalists? not talking about nobody. The game? I'm not talking about nobody specific. I'm just asking a question. I think if you, yeah, I see. I see your point. You have to utilize what you're. What you're. Doing. Some people, some people um, choose to, to delve into the the realm of misinformation. And it's very Trumpish, which I also. You did say that uh, Ack would be good on the Trump. I campaign. I didn't say Ack would be good on the Trump campaign. Well, no, you said he would be good, but it was in reference to I the said prior dude. tweet. Dude, okay, were you referring D -D. to AK with? Dude, no, I was D -D. saying dude would be great on, the, on a, a great a great addition to the Trump uh, to the Trump campaign is what I said. Yeah. Because misinformation is rampant. I mean, he he is a uh, he does he's a fan of that guy. I could see that. Those would make good bedfellows. <laughs> so, so this, you know what really, it, this just shows that you actually do listen to Euphoria every day. <laughs> <laughs> he might have just, just been driving around you in the taxi. You play it first thing in the morning? Um, I, today I listened, I started it at 8.30. <laughs> 8.30 a.m. You play it once and you have it on loop. Nah, I looped it. I looped it. it back to back? Yeah, I looped it about three times this morning. It's just so good. It is a great song. It's just good, bro. Like, oh, you didn't finish your ranking, did you? On, um, on yeah, what did I have it? Oh, I, have it I have it third. I have it third under. I, I have uh, my top three, not like us. Family matters, and then you I, have family matters above Euphoria. Explain that, please. I'm trying to be fair, I guess. So, nah, because I think no, it's no, a no, great no. record. Just the records, not being fair. You or... can make the argument that it's not like us, Euphoria, and then Family Matters. I'm asking you. Why do you have Family Matters? I like Family Matters. I think Family Matters. I'm saying, but what? What? Probably the last great Drake record. Oh, okay. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. It was the last. I fuck with that. I fuck with this. It was the last. I used to go to this ice cream shop in my neighborhood. Like, what the fuck? No, it was the last moment he had with Drake. Before he sent me a rat emoji. That's that's my breakup song. That's our breakup song. That's our breakup song, man. It has sentimental value too. But yeah, no, I don't. I got not like us. Euphoria. Um. I got Not Like Us, then Euphoria, and <laughs> all then... All Kendrick songs and then Family Matters. <laughs> and then Meet the Grams, even though I don't listen to Wait, it. Wait, what's your highest ranking? Was Does Drake crack the top four? How many records did Kendrick put out? I like uh, I like Push Us better than I like Family Matters. Wow. 
No, push ups, I think, is underrated. Push ups is good. It's just, it's just, you know what it is? It's nostalgia. The push up song <laughs> for me. Yeah, the push up song is because it's because he was so he was so confident. 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 And drop, it was just like, drop, he, was drop, so, he was so con- he was so sure that this is gonna go the same way it went in Philly. And it's like this is this ain't that, bro. This ain't Philly. Not like that, but this ain't that. Yeah. So does Taylor Made kind of give you even more joy when he was I don't talking remember about, that shit. Well, that's when he was talking about, nah, 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 you follow no, it through. Some people say that's the biggest mistake of the battle, that he did, shouldn't have did the Pac thing. He shouldn't have did the... the oh, that's the yeah. AI shit? Yeah. yeah. That shit's ass. That and backfired. He should be ashamed, of, <laughs> should be ashamed <laughs> of himself for that. That that back. But do you think that that backfired? Like that Concept-wise, biggest... brilliant. Execution, terrible. But that's that's... For instance, I'll give you an example, right? The concept of real estate is amazing because it, bring, it, it garners wealth. <laughs> yeah. And I, I have this book that I'm, it's about uh, socioeconomic redlining. But real estate is a brilliant idea, right? But the people who executed it, terribly, because they were colonizers. And they came over here and they laid everybody down and just took shit, right? Culture, spices, all kind of shit, right? <laughs> Take yeah. that spice. So I think the thought is amazing. Taylor made amazing, horrible execution, but that's indicative of the lineage. What was wrong with the execution? Using the, the voice, the voices AI, the AI voices? Yes. Well, yes and no. You could have did the same thing without the AI voices. It would have had the same. It would have been the same thing. But I don't expect someone of that ilk to understand that cultural awareness. Exactly. Sort of thing. Canadian. Um. It's not even Canadian. There's Canadians with cultural awareness. I actually respect a lot of, I, 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 like I said, I've interviewed Baca, right? And I actually respect uh, Canadian culture. Like, I think that it's actually contributed to, a, I know a lot of history, you know, yeah. obviously. So I, I understand how Canada played a role in different things, like um, when it comes to America, even the, inter, the transatlantic slave, slave trade, stuff like that, right? But Canada has culture. The mascot is the problem. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So if I, if the Rams are gonna, we're playing the Super Bowl and the Rams are up by 21, it's a 21 skunk. Just I don't know if you play Madden, but we 21 up on the Super Bowl and, and you, the you, and the mascot is in the stands swinging on niggas like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Ram is punching. The people. Ram, the Ram is running around just swinging on niggas and kids and shit. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the mascot is the problem, not not mm. not the team, if mm. that makes sense. I just want to say, I have no problems with anyone in Toronto. I have to go back to Toronto uh, for my sister's wedding. Bro, I don't wedding. have a problem with Toronto. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you do. I'm just saying any top fives, top sixes. I don't want any problems with anybody. That shit is just. Online. That shit is not, bro. Don't get that shit. No, I don't. Don't. I don't yeah, no. I'm just. I'm, that's all I'm saying. Uh, I think not like us. One being responsible with your platform is a thing. Yes, that's why yep. we did not bring that up, uh, and I hope that that doesn't. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, Middle but, child. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do we? Okay. Uh, no, I'll give my ranking real quick. Okay. Not like us. One. Uh, I have six sixteen in LA. Two. Wow. I have uh, family matters. Three. Euphoria. Four. Uh, Push ups. Five. Taylor made. Uh, Taylor made. Then hard part six. I just think six sixteen matters a lot more. Uh, in this battle than we think it does. I'm basing off songs, so I don't know if that oh, you the, Oh, you were going like best songs? Just songs. Oh, okay, yeah, no, yeah. I was going on like part songs. No, part. literally just as songs, just as records. Okay, no. Just that, as records. Okay, I actually have that. If it's records, I have uh, Not Like Us, Family Matters, Euphoria, Push Ups, and then 616. Taylor so you Maid. think Family Matters is better than Euphoria? As a song. Yeah. 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 Just because, okay. like, I would say it's the only song that's, that, besides Not Like Us, that gets stuck in my head every once in a while. I'll be walking and I'll just drop, drop, drop. So just as a song structure, I think it ran a little too long with the verses, but, and I wouldn't have necessarily done the second verse shooting at everyone else besides Kendrick, but as a song structure. I love the idea that he shot a whole video, right? Mm-hmm. Imported the wrong van, shot a whole video, did the whole shit, right? <laughs> Oh. Did the whole yeah. production. Yeah, big production. Big production. He's going to go on vacation. A hearse, a casket, mm-hmm. the whole shit. Money. Spent money, right? Went to the... Chinese food? Went to, yeah. yeah. New, new went, to the, went to the safety deposit box, got his shit out of there, 
Put it on the, yeah, put the, it all the in on, on the dude and all that. Right, we're never gonna check these and, allegations, Jeremy, with the show, man. And the thing that stuck in your mind is drop, drop, drop. This nigga spent all that time for you <laughs> to just be like drop. That should just I just find myself walking and just saying drop, drop, drop. That should let you know it comes back down to the music at the end of the day. No, that should let you know that that nigga wasted a lot of time and energy <laughs> when he could have just did that shit and people like yourself would have just. <laughs> well, yeah. we saw that Kendrick didn't drop any visual at all, <laughs> and it works. It works. Yo, so it's man. about the music. <laughs> yeah, oh, they definitely man. are gonna say that. And this, this is crazy. Picture. But here's my number. What? That's a great. That's a Canadian classic. I know. I fuck with Carly Rae Jepsen. What you talking about? She makes slaps. Slappers. Call me maybe is better than Family Matters. I think Call Me Matters is Diamond, <laughs> or Call Me Maybe. That that's crazy. That's I, not crazy. It no, actually it's not. It is it, a better. It song. sold more. It streamed more. And it's wildly. It got way, way more radio play. Yeah, but I would it argue, actually is better statistically. You don't see that on the media base. Family Matters ain't on media base. West Coast. Yeah. Yeah. No. Shout out to Carly Rae Jepsen. Um, <laughs> Fuck Carly Rae Jepsen. <laughs> Carly Rae Jepsen. Carly Rae Jepsen got slaps. Does she Speaking have of slaps, slaps, yeah, she does. Yeah, she yeah. got two slaps. Diamond Records, the slaps. What, yeah. what do we leave Okay, off? okay. Is there anyone? Okay, so then we had uh, Guys in Paris. Were you surprised about Platinum? <laughs> <I love> that. <laughs> 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 Fellas in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> guys, in, guys in Paris is wild. I've so, never seen you laugh. Wow, are you being sexist, fuck. Jeremy Heck? I didn't see it coming. Right. Because, have, because uh, now just oblige me. Technically, <laughs> niggas are all encompassing, right? So, <laughs> niggas being. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Niggas being all encompassing, including guys and girls, for you to just relegate it to guys in Paris is kind of sexist. I actually, I'm just saying. I'm, 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 not, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I respect the change in angle. Artists in Paris. I respect that was the change in angle. You know Artists in Paris. Now that's how you use your good. platform. That's how King. you use it responsibly. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, moving on to future. That's any time I saw niggas in Paris perform live <laughs> in Paris. In Paris you, oh yeah, too. you were in Paris. I was in Paris. I saw niggas in Paris on during the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the hell of niggas everywhere. <laughs> niggas was running, swimming. Climbing. <laughs> Did you see? It? Uh, I, I'm gonna back out of this topic. Um, you didn't see Snoop in Paris? I saw Snoop in Paris. Same shit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> saw people in Paris. I saw people in Paris. No, that's the, but that is the greatest nigga, greatest and worst. What? Whoa. Niggas Whoa. In Niggas Whoa. in Paris. Look, okay. That's that's it. diamond. Hold on. It's diamond. Hold on. Hold on. It's the okay. biggest N word. Now you record. sound. You just sound like Drake in that yeah, old that video. Yeah, in the old video. I was gonna say. Yeah. That Put was, that video up. That was a hard. That was a hard, hard pirate hard. right there, boy. <laughs> Shit. But okay. I did see Let's niggas in Paris in Paris <laughs> <laughs> perform 13, 14, 15 times. Again. Well, did you did Again. you think they were gonna keep going? I was, hey, that's I was, for love, sure. I was what Elliot for Wilson it. just that's did, it's gonna fuck, it's gonna trip the algorithm for sure. What am I gonna trigger on Nigga video gonna be like, what the fuck did he say? <laughs> 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 the algorithm be like, wait, did he say that? Guys in Paris. I can't wait to see the little ca closed caption shit. I'm gonna turn oh, it on. Oh, you ever watch it with closed caption? Oh, I'm watching that shit with it on and be like, what this shit? <laughs> <laughs> see, if they put I haven't it had my coffee, man. I haven't had my breakfast. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, guys in Paris. How many more we have left? People uh, in Paris. People in uh, Paris. Thrift shop. Shout out to Macklemore. Diamond song. Mm, so he, you saying he deserved that Grammy? No, I'm just giving you. Oh my God! I was no, your surprise. he said he didn't. Don't go there. The okay, who else? You know Don't go okay, there. Actually, go there. Uh, we had Unforgettable. Sway Lee French and Montana. French Montana. Yeah. Yeah. French Montana got a diamond record. Diamond Montana. record. Uh, F Love XXX Tentacion. and Starboy by the Weekend. That's it. Those are the. No, no, these are ones that I thought you might be surprised about. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm not surprised by. I'm actually surprised by Starboy. Me too. I don't necessarily see the. I don't get it, but like I don't know what a star boy is to this day. It's. It, I think it's. It's slang <laughs> for. Um, is that crazy? That's offensive. That's some. That's some shit. Like with the letters. No, it was. Uh, it was popular. Oh, popularized by Canadian recording artist The Weeknd. A star boy is like a rock star. The term can refer to a very famous man. Uh, but it was from, I don't want to get the culture wrong as to where it was from. You from Canada. But it wasn't Canadian slang necessarily. <laughs> uh, Starboy. That's not Canadian? So you saying that Weekend is a poser? No, it, it was Canadian, but it was, um, was it, I don't know if it was Jam Jamaican slang. Okay, that's why. I just wanted oh, to get like the, the I didn't origin. know he was Jamaican. Uh, I don't know if the weekend is Jamaican, but Toronto has a lot of Jamaican influence. Yeah, yeah for sure. Absolutely. Um, but Future, speaking of influential. Congratulations, the Future. Number one album. 
125,000 sold. Hendrix. He has Third a number one this year. Since, and also since DS2, Two. every album's been number one. Like 10, 10 or 11 in a row, which is insane. But I did say, because people were, were scared to say it, and I kept seeing the same narrative like, Yo, you don't understand. This is for like the hardcore future fans. Mixtape Pluto. Mixtape Pluto. He had the he had the line about, uh, fuck your album and ain't slapping like my mixtape. Mm -hmm. Mixtape Pluto does not slap like those Metro albums. Let's be honest. Like I, this year. This year. So I I kind of don't like that he did it, but I do like the accomplishment of it that he got another album out. But it's not the level of the Metro albums, unfortunately. But you know I love Future. I think Future. At the end of the day, is probably the greatest Southern rapper. The great, he's an all-time top ten great old goat of all time, and he doesn't get enough credit. I don't think people realize the accomplishments and how many, how much his catalog. His run is crazy. His run is crazy. I saw somebody comparing it to Wayne, and somebody was saying the DJ Heads point before, like everybody disrespecting Wayne right now because someone was saying on my timeline, I retweeted it about this is a little Wayne type run, and nobody's giving Future credit for it. How was his run? When did he when did he dropped the first Since album? DS two, I think. The first first album. No, no, he had a first album that didn't do as well. Pluto and then honest. So when did DS two come out? What year? Two thousand and fifteen. All right, so we talking about nine years, right? Yeah, he's had ten or eleven straight number one albums. Uh, right. March eleventh, twenty fourteen. So about ten years. All right, Google this. How old was Lil Wayne when Carter three came out? Okay, What's during that? Carter three, Lil Wayne was. Well, he's 41 now. Carter 3 came out. And Carter 3 came out in 2008, I think. So you about to have me do math. I know. Live. Yeah, 2008. So In HD. Uh, what is it? 20, Give me the number. 2024. Okay, yeah, you can do the math because I'm going to mess it up. So 2008 is when Carter uh, <laughs> 3 came out. Okay. He is 41 currently this in shows 2024. Shows education. So 2024 minus 2008. 2008. Yeah. 16. That and was 16 years ago. Okay, so, so 41 minus 16. Am I do, I'm doing that right, right? So he was 25? 25. Alex had it already. He yeah. was 25. 25 years old. Okay, so... In future. No, no, no. You don't have to do that. He's DS2, 40 right now. DS2 came out when? 2015? 2014, yeah. So nine years. No, I think it's 15. 2015. Uh, no? Lil Wayne had a platinum record at 16. Correct or no? Yeah, oh, no, no, no. yeah, yeah. Little yeah, one's no, a no, child no. star. Yes. Okay, so sixteen to twenty-six. Carry the one. I'm sorry. No, I'm saying that's ten years, okay. right? It so, was twenty fifteen. Uh, dirty Sprite. Okay, yeah. so if future goes another year and a half, then yes, you can you could say he has a little Wayne run. Yeah, but there's way more albums. Like there's there's ten or eleven number one albums in a row. Yeah, but it was also harder to do it back then. It was physical. He was going platinum. You have to give him credit for that. Okay. You're degraded on curve, right? It's it's easier to have more more albums if more people can have have access to your music. People have to physically go buy CDs to support yeah. Lil Wayne. It's not the same thing. You know what I'm saying? And that's not counting the mixtape stuff. That's not counting the, the mixtape shit or the features. Yeah, I'm just saying. You well, gotta, why does? But well, why is? Does and it, then and then also, why does it on. still feel like Future doesn't get enough credit? Though? I'm, I'm about, hold on. Let me let me also say this too. The 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 part about. The, the unforeseen shit, what drama went through with the mixtapes, right? Mm -hmm. That's unaccounted for. That's not sound mm -hmm. scannable, like the bootleggers and the hand to hand and yeah. me burning you a CD or the squad up mixtape. And like, well, it was a classic mixtape. You have to give him yeah. credit for that shit. That's not the same thing. So I would say you can make that comparison if Future goes another year and a half or two, then yes, it makes sense. But I don't think it's fair to just to jumble those two together if it's not the same amount of time with the same impact and the same run. There's more people who are Lil Wayne sons than Future sons right now, but they're also so hasn't been enough time allotted yet for you to make those comparisons for the inner, I mean people in general. There's a lot of future sons though too. There is a lot of future yeah. sons, but I'm just saying Lil Wayne. Was, yeah, Lil Wayne's influence maybe. It's not the same bigger. thing. I, I want the idea of the battle of like who's the greater Southern rapper of all time between Future and Lil Wayne. Yeah, and get out. And let's let us get out of Andre 3000 land for well, a second. Well, and let's clarify, you don't. You're not. This isn't a bars conversation because if you're there's they're not comparable. I don't judge but, they're artists. They make records. I'm just clarifying. Uh, from yeah, the when I I never judge it that way. Like I always yeah. talk about the skills. That's not a skills competition. I'm talking about artists and making records and the I, big stage. What I will say is, Future as a lyricist on this project is the greatest gaslighter I've ever heard in my life. I <laughs> On Mixtape Pluto? I, I, wrote, I wrote a couple down, because I was when I was listening, I was like, this is incredible. He said, I told my bitch, if I got to be faithful, I might fall off. <laughs> that's what he told? That's, what that was, he, that's, that's not gaslighting. Right there. How you know he don't draw his inspiration from his activities? I'm sure he does. 
That's what sure he, he said so. that in real life. So he might fall he off. Might that fall was off. the turn he made with DS2. He had to, he couldn't be the person with the, yeah. with the, the Sierra wanted him to be in that type of pop crossover it star. It makes yeah. sense, bro. He refused. We we get the best music when people go in through shit. He said, I, I would choose the dirty over you on that album. I'm sure. not mad at it. He said, she charging more for the P now, and that's my fault. <laughs> that is your he fault. Took he ran her stock up. <laughs> he, he did. He said, it's bad luck having dudes effing on you. Imagine me doing my bid when dudes end up nutting on you. Wait, wait, what? Say that what? one again. <laughs> I didn't hear the last part. Say it again. Imagine me doing my bid when dudes end up nutting on you. I'm for sure watching this with closed captions on. He said, <laughs> he said, driving it fast, doing the dash without even trying to. No, I didn't birth you, but I designed you. So it's a cold-hearted cat catalog that Future's been cool. <laughs> hey, man, I'm going to borrow some terminology from my homies from the Bay. Future's a cat. So is that like different than a dog or same thing? That's No, a cat. It, God damn it, Jeremy. I'm just asking. I'm clarifying. <laughs> yeah. I, I, maybe this isn't for me. I'm just... Yeah, he, Jer, he's a cat. I mean, like he's like a... Damn, how do you describe cat? Like a... He like a jive-ass nigga. Okay, well, I'm glad that you mm. said that. <laughs> Does that, does that, does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Okay. No. What the fuck is a jive ass? What's the fuck is a jive ass nigga? Like a shit talker, you mean? Like just what, like, yeah. yeah, just like a, a, what? Yeah, slick talking ass, just yeah. like, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like a verbal scammer. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Now, but now, like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> no, he is. But, but I, what I will, <laughs> what I will say about Future is, Although there was no balance on the album, there was one song where he did talk about his friend, which I, it was actually yeah, kind of a... That's the best song on the album. Yeah, um, it was called that's To the My best Dog, song the I think. That's the best song um, on the project. And he, he, it was the first time, bless you. I think it was the first time I'd really seen him show depth like that, where mm -hmm. he talked about the other side of drug use, where Lost My Dog. Lost My Dog, and yeah. Lost My Dog is the best song. He was right. basically saying, like, he lost a friend to fentanyl, and he, he said on the hook, like, I lost a friend to fentanyl, but I'm on drugs while I'm singing this. So it was kind of cool to see him use a little bit of balance. What I will say is that balance was quickly gone on the next song. I would have liked <laughs> to end on that song, but it was cool that it was like, you know. Him My favorite song on the project, Too Fast. Well, that's I like Too media Fast. Is the media base ready? Yes. They actually, what's funny is when I put the, when I, when the, when the, when the project dropped, I listened to it. I'm driving. And and I'm listening to it, going through it, going through it. And then my guy from I ain't gonna say my, a, a record executive called me, and he's like, "You listening to Future?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Which one?" I said, "Too Fast." I said, "That's the single." He's like, "Damn, you really good at this shit." <laughs> I said, "I know." And then the email, <laughs> next day, the emails went out from the labels, and they're officially working it as a single. Wow! And you texted him the BPM right away too. No, the BPM. He he, he don't Future don't stray. Stray. He be all he sixty to eighty BPM. He's faithful with BPM. nonstop. Yeah, he's, he knows his pocket. Yeah, Plutowski is the funniest song of all time. Of all time? Uh, maybe not of all time. Funniest song of the year on that hook when it kind of sounds like the Scarlet hook a little bit, but when when he when he hits the uh, when he just sounds like he's. If he if he is cosplaying as someone who's on lean, then he's doing a great job. I will say. Didn't Future say he don't do drugs? Yeah. All right, all right, stop that shit. There's more. I don't give a fuck. Did <laughs> did he say? Didn't Future admit that he doesn't do drugs? He said he he doesn't do them anymore. Yeah. So, but that was I don't a know. While if, back though. I don't know if this is like him <laughs> living this. Uh. And I, I want to throw out a question. I'm not. Mean, I'm not trying to. What do you call it? Uh, don't not res, not to disrespect Southern yeah. rappers, right? This is just about a few. This is a future question to two future advocates, right? I'm not a future advocate. Okay, to Elliot Wilson. Yes, I'm a future. Do advocate. we hold people who do who do drug rap to the same esteem as they do as street rappers when they talk about street shit? For instance. Someone will be hypercritical of someone who will rap about street shit, but don't do street shit. Yeah. But then at the same time, listen to drug rap or weed rap to people who don't drink or smoke or do any drugs. I think Future's breaking the rules. I think that back in the day it was like that, but I think that he still raps about drug use. It seems like through the years his drug use has, has decreased. We don't know to what level. And he's still getting away with it. And people love it. He sells the lifestyle. I think like you said, he, he and to Jeremy reading those lyrics, it's like he's... He has this new persona since DS2 about how he approaches things, and I think people buy into it. I, I personally... Like, did he really lose a friend to fentanyl? 
We don't know, but the song's a great song. It's the best song on the album. Well, I, I personally, to the question, I, I have been thinking a lot about this, and shout out to D1, who have, he talks a lot about this, but I don't think it's wrong to question it. I don't think it's wrong to say that, you know, people speaking things that are negative into the universe or into the into the space that it may have a negative effect on people. And I think that you need balance. That's why I, I applaud that song, but I think we need more balance. If you're going to show one side, you have to show the other. Same with, with street rap. It's like, if you're going to talk about that because it's your experience, that's your, you know, MO, you can do that, but you have to kind of show the other side. You can't just glorify. I think glorifying is the word that gets lost in translation. When you talk about something, it's one thing, but when you glorify it and make it seem like this is, this is his quote about it. So he said, my music, this is in 2016, my music may portray a certain kind of image and I know it's some people that might be super drugged out and they listen to the music like, hey, thank you, you speaking for me. And then some people that's not super drugged out that feel like, man, I don't have to do drugs. I can listen to future and feel like I'm on something and don't have to try drugs. I don't do it for you to really have to live this type of lifestyle because I feel like that's the number one thing everybody likes to talk about. It's a catch. And he basically said, I'm not this kind of guy who's super drugged out all the time. You no, know, I don't think you have to, to your point, I don't think you have to live what you're rapping because I don't want people out here spinning blocks and drilling shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's not what I'm on. But, like, I just wanted to know, I think it's okay to pose the question yeah, as far as, yeah. like, do we expect the same thing in different facets of how we consume our music? Because if we had, like, Lecrae, right? Lecrae and then Miles Minnick, they're Christian rappers or, mm -hmm. you know, or rappers of the gospel, yeah. right? So what if they weren't really that? They would get ostracized yeah. for that. Yeah. Does that make, so like we have to figure out like are we still, ho are we holding everyone to the same standard? Is it nuanced? Are we grading on a curve? Like what's the, what's the standard? I think they're still buying into them. It's like, for example, even what you just said about the lyrics about women, if we saw Future all boot up going to a basketball game and like holding some girl's hand and sitting courtside, that kind of goes against, right, the lifestyle he's been selling us. Like it seems like, he has his harem of women now. He's got all his baby mamas taken care of. Like, he's presenting a certain thing. So if he came back with Boo Boo in Love in front of us, it would kind of go against the music in a sense there, too. Oh, you mean you know? like, um, let's say a super group, a super group of women who always spoke about independence, but all are married. That's what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I have no comment on that. Out here telling all these girls to do all this wild shit and... Going home to their husbands. Going home to their husbands after. <laughs> and now at least now we left out here to deal with the remnants of this bullshit. <laughs> you have been posting a lot on Instagram about uh yeah, I think the stat was if the more you spend on a wedding, the higher you are likely to get divorced. Yeah, I got that from somewhere. I just I just find it interesting. You know what? Um I was talking to someone significant, um, someone someone significant in my life, and I was explaining to them my thoughts on things. Yeah. And this person said to me, you like to just pull the veil back on people and just rip them out of their bubble and pull them into reality. And I'm like, I don't necessarily like to do that, but I don't appreciate people living in their bubble when it doesn't actually exist. At least I want you to know your bubble exists and, and then it exists in that. Mm. But I don't necessarily, because I don't have that luxury. So I want you to know what the real world looks like. We out here, I got a hole in the back of my head right here. We eating soupy porridge every day and it's Sentinels chasing us. That's what the fuck is going on. Now you, you get to eat steak and shit. That was a Matrix reference for you internet nerds. You get to eat steak and shit and think it's good and steak don't really exist. I'm just, my whole point is the reality of what we live in is not what's indicative of what's happening in the music and in the culture. And when those two things combine, then we wanna go, like I saw Rob Markman speak on things that's going on in the media space too, as far as like, then we wanna be like, oh, it went too far and all this other kind of shit. Like we lost, we someone's birthday just passed who we lost to drugs. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm not condemning people who rap about this shit. Like I love bots too. That's not what I'm, I'm gonna play the music in the club and all of that. But there has to be some sort of, is it parents who's liable? Are we liable as media people? Are the consumers liable? Or like who, Who's holding who's holding yeah. accountability for these things? Well, that's why it's great that he did make Lost My Dog, right? Like you said, Jeremy, maybe it's not enough balance, but at least that's more of a balance that he's probably put out in recent. You know, Fez, Fez, take a, Fez Made a Sweep was another record like that. Like, the consequences of certain things. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, he could probably put a little bit more in his music, but I love that that song's on there, and it's clearly the best song on the album. Yeah, I, I think we're semi-responsible uh, because, like you said, you have to be responsible with your platform. So I think the more that media glorifies this without talking about the real life 
I, even mentioning that future doesn't necessarily live some of this lifestyle, I think is important. It's important to know that, you know, some of these people who are talking about criminal activity aren't really living that life. Because a lot of people who are young, consumer bases are young, right? Like the, the people who have the most amount of time to listen, we might be rare because we're in this space and we do this as jobs. But the average person who has a nine to five job isn't as focused on music and consuming as the kids, like the 13 year old kid who is really into this, watching these people, thinks it's real, doesn't know. They think it's real. They think it's real. So I think it is. Like wrestling. Right? (laughs) Yeah, like you grow up thinking. So it it is on us, I think, to at least bring light to the conversation of if you're going to put something out into the world that may cause negative harm, it's up to the rappers to speak about it. It's up to them to show balance. It's up to them to show the other side. And it's up to us to call it out when it's too far, to show what's real, and to show both sides of things. And I personally, I don't like listening to this stuff. I, it makes me feel bad when I'm in the car and I'm listening to something and I know the negative consequences that it could happen. Now, I'm I like everyone else, I enjoy a good song. March Madness is one of my favorite songs. But, like, I don't like listening to things that I know internally may be externally harming people. I just want to know what y'all think. Because I've seen the dude, i seen another dude, a little homie from Jacksonville, um, lost his life. Like and and then I seen the whole like Young and Ace thing, and then you see like what's going on with Young Dolph with, trial with 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 Dolph shit, Fulio. and like I don't think like for like I didn't I wasn't gonna speak on this Dolph shit because I don't talk about criminal shit or street shit yeah. on the air. That's just a rule of thumb what I don't do. But because it's in the court and stuff like that, I don't think we need to have cameras in the courtroom. I don't think we need to be having people like live tweeting trial and all that. from the for, like. That shit is toxic and that shit is detrimental to, to a lot of people's mental health and some people's physical health, depending on yeah. what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I just think there needs to be some, like, right now we just, it's complete, we just off the rails and it's just yes. everything goes, no holes barred. We interviewing niggas who done murdered somebody on camera and then we- Shooters doing podcasts. It's like, it's like, what the fuck is going on? And then everybody's going to jail. You're not exempt, bro. They're yeah. going to lock you up. They locked up Puff. They indicted the Remember? mayor of New York, where yeah. Elliot Wilson is from. I miss Gotham. <laughs> it, it got, it <laughs> they is. just indicted the mayor. Yeah, Eric Adams. Trump was convicted, a convicted felon. Like they are <laughs> not. These people are. They're going to no get you. No one's exempt. Yeah. Nobody's above the program, bro. So make threats online and interview weird ass niggas who commit crimes and like that shit is crazy to me. But be responsible with your platform. Be responsible with your platform, music included. Yeah, and the internet is used for many things. One thing I I don't think that it should be used for uh, is for Meek Mill. Now I am <laughs> no. no listen I am Twitter Hall com- of Famer. I'm completely against censorship, and I truly believe in free space free speech. However, there's one person that I will stand on that I think just should be locked out of their Twitter account sometimes. But I would like to read, because like you said, Hall of Fame, I I made a list for you guys of Meek Mill's best tweets of all time. Alex, please run the music. I want to hire an investigative team, 100K cash to find out every specific detail involving Meek Mill name to Diddy Case. I also want them to look at who is powering the media involving Meek, anything to do with Buddy. Buddy. Something is not right. April 26, 2020. I just pulled out. Pulled out what? Double exclamation point. Double entendre. He Triple. just pulled out. Two. Wait, 2020. How old is his son? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not no, even. This is, this well, is actually. No, wait, okay. Uh, Meek Mill's son, age. Uh, He's a proud father he says more of than one child. three boys. Oh, never mind. I thought this was like one of them type of dudes. Okay. No, it could be. Okay. Uh, 2021, though, a year later. Really? No, no, no. No, not the kid. We, oh, well, we got to look right. into that. Let's get back to that music, Alex, please. <laughs> Two girlfriends kissing on a yacht. Now it's a friendship. Emoji. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> Two girlfriends kissing on a yacht. Now it's a friendship. I don't, I don't get with it. this, I don't either. 2019. This D, good as hell. Shrug emoji. He be tweeting this? These are all live tweets. <laughs> this is my favorite, personally. This is 2024. This is recent. When I got a girl around me, I'm effing her twice a day, LOL. Ask some of your favorites, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Pussy don't control me, but it's like a high. 
One love to the gay people, but that juicy pussy do it for me. <laughs> Smiley oh. face. I done ran red lights to get that feeling. Y'all weird on here like devils. These are all well. still up? Oh, these are, Some, these are, a couple are deleted. Okay. This one's a deleted one from 2012. Titties, ass, pussy. Any bitch can give you that shit. Loyalty, love, and attention. Only a real bitch can give you that. But I will close. He did say you got to go deeper than the surface to understand me in 2020. So maybe we don't get it. He be tweeting this? These are live tweets. Twitter he fingers. He tweeted saying, he tweeted an Amazon link to a dildo and then tweeted right after, an hour later. This is him tweeting. How do you unlink your Twitter from your Amazon account? This is urgent. I need... <laughs> and then he tweeted, I need vibrating panties with the remote. LOL. They on Amazon? Can you ask people around you certain things? I would assume... Okay, let's say I have a question about the music industry or journalism or media. I have very capable people around me that I would text... Hey, how do I do this? What do you think? Meek Mill is friends with billionaires, and he is texting. Yeah, people always and say. And he's tweeting. He always does the, the, the group to the people's followers, like, "Hey, followers, guide me in this direction." Like, <laughs> not, what you, do you have, ma you have famous friends, rich billionaire friends. <laughs> what do you expect is going to be the outcome? of this? <laughs> I'm with your Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> this is urgent. It's crazy. <laughs> Just ask your team. Why he got the what? What was he? What was you looking for, champ? He was looking for this the right dildo. here. But why specifically? 10 inch. <laughs> <laughs> like, is, that's very specific. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. very specific. That's very, that's a very specific, very specific uh, look. Greatest Twitter Link, link. performer of all time. You He's know one. He's got to be He's one. He's got to be a GOAT. He's a GOAT with He's Twitter. He's a GOAT. He's been locked out of his account at times, too. He's, he's, had, a, he's had a tumultuous run. He said enough. He's been locked out at times. 10 inch, super long, realistic <laughs> deal, though, for women. <laughs> Waterproof, <laughs> ultra soft silicone. Waterproof is crazy. Waterproof? Nah, bro. You don't understand. These women got these, bro. They got some shit. They got these things now. It's crazy, bro. Next level. I'm in a group chat with the homegirls. They be wilding. What did they say? <laughs> bro, them things, them things, them th you could never be one of those, Jay. It's over. For she get one of them, the bin for 3,600 joints, it's, it's over. over for you, bro. If you, if you them motherfuckers got USB C, Bluetooth. Like, this shit. <laughs> music? They have BPM counters? She two wireless charging, bro. That and they be crazy. showing you it? They, they screenshot? Bro, the my homegirl, we wild. My homegirl's wild. So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I'm very educated about a lot of things I shouldn't know about. <laughs> including some of you men out here. Mm. You you got the T in the in the group chats? Yeah, they talk about the, their experiences with, with these dudes. So, see? I'll be guiding them. I, I actually save a lot of men a lot of headaches by coaching my homegirls. Not, not about this, though. I, I don't got nothing to do with this. What do you coach them on? <laughs> huh? What do you coach them on? Just how to conduct themselves and how to be a pleasure and an asset. Like, the man go out, he deal with a lot. Just be, you know, chill, relax. Don't be a pleasure on. and you're, an asset. You're a hero out here for the fans. West Coast. Well, that's all I had on Meek Mill. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Great research there, Jeremy. That's all you had? That's all I had. You don't got 10 more inches on Meek? Hey, nope. hey, oh, whoa, the bigger picture. <laughs> the I got no, no more inches on me. Pause. Uh, do we want to do spotlight? Spotlight. Go, Elliot Wilson. Oh, Why well, always gotta go first? You first on the call sheet. <laughs> oh, I got a good one. It's a, it's probably a friend of the show. It's your guy, Ab Soul. Shout out to Solo. You told uh, DJ had I think in an earlier episode implied that there's music coming from Ab Soul, and I'm here to confirm that because I was given a sort of link of some sort of things of Sonics. You got the untitled link. Uh, is that what it's called? Oh, can we give real information? Or I no, we hell okay, no. got you. Okay, so yeah, I was given a link to some Absol Sonics that are upcoming, and I enjoyed it very much. And there's a lot of uh, good you hear that, you hear that things slap on, the way. on there, huh? You hear that slap on there? I heard a couple good things on there. Yeah, I mean, we can we can speak a little bit more off mic, but yeah, now nah, just shout out to Absol, man. Good to know he's he, we at least know I'm getting the Absol record before the end of the year. It's, <laughs> it's got some slaps on there, and yes, I'm enjoying sir. it. So shout out to Absol. Shout out to Solo. TD. So I uh, was speaking of TDE, um, their new artist. I don't want to mispronounce what's how do you pronounce her name? Dochi? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> the alternative. Oh, rock. the girl they just signed. Oh, Alameda. Alameda. She was fire. She was fire. I did listen to her project. I really liked it. Uh Blue and Exile dropped a really dope project too. Uh there's a, a really good storytelling song about him maybe signing the death row. Um, I forget what it was. That's called. like a reunion album, right? They haven't been together yeah. a long time. I, I, yeah, Suge Knight it was called. Yeah, so it was it was it was very like it was nostalgic. It felt like West Coast. Um, 
And then I heard some some unreleased from I was talking about him a few weeks ago, but Chris Patrick, super, super talented. I I I told him I think he can take that next spot of like lyrical, melodic, like he raps kind of like anyone in Dreamville, but he can make a song better than most people that that I know. So shout out to Chris Patrick. And then my homie Fresco Trey is dropping on October 4th. Uh it, incredible song, a lot of soul to it. Um, something I think the space needs. We talk about balance. I think you need to be able to speak and have a good melody. So that's coming. Well, I got one more spotlight too. Cause oh, yeah. uh, we mentioned um, we joked about like Julie Greenwald and like a lot of great industry people. You know, with the restructuring, LA Grange coming in, uh, I'll, moving on to the next chapter. So I just want to shout Julie Greenwald out, Mike Kaiser. Some people have been in the industry for a long time. Kevin Lyles, yeah. we obviously mentioned uh, last episode. So salute to them, and they they people that don't know they were. Key figures in building Def Jam, they built Atlantic, and you know, on to the next chapter. Yeah. Um, I want to shout out to the great state of Texas. I, I, really, I really enjoy being in Texas, my second favorite place to go. Um, I like Houston uh, the most. I fuck with Dallas too. Oh, speaking of Dallas, I met four bats. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Yeah, I just met four bats, and um, that was interesting. He was really I cool. I like him. He was, he was really cool, really respectful like too. He yeah. was just like, he, he walked up to me, like we met. Shout out to my my boy. I don't want to say his real name. My poly homie. Shout out to the poly homies. Um, he he's security guard, but uh, he introduced me to four bats. He was working with him, and he was just like uh, bats, like you know, shook my hand. And he was like, "Man, what's up? Nice to meet you." I'm like, "For sure." And he kind of went off and did his own thing. And then later on, when nobody was kind of around, we had a sidebar. He he was like, "Yo, bro, like he's like, man, I've been hearing your name since I was seven. Wow. Yeah. He, like, no, he studies the game. I was like, "What?" He was like, "Yeah, I'm 19." I'm like. Oh, I'm that nigga now. Okay. <laughs> oh, gee. He said you yeah. old. <laughs> oh, gee. Saying? But he was like, yeah, I've been, you know, like, you know, people fuck with you. Like, people got a lot of respect for you. And I just thought, like, I didn't know that that was going to be my interaction with him. I thought it was going to be in different. Like, I thought he was one of them loopy, young. Nah, he's yeah, solid. He's tuned yeah. in. Yeah, he's that, very yeah. he's very astute. And I really appreciate that about, about you know, the youth coming up and also being a part of this industry, look, studying it. But not just because he knows who I am, but... Like he knew other things and stuff like so I thought that was super dope. Yeah. And speaking of Houston, let's also shout out uh, Max. I want to shout out Max O'Clean. Oh yeah, with Tyler. With Tyler, and I think more people get on my DJ head shit. I think more people should look into the production of Tyler the Creator. Like Max. I feel like, yeah. you know, he's he's itching to work with other artists out of his space, and I think Maxo already had done a song with him. Mm -hmm. Spin the block came back and did another one with him, and yeah, I just love to see Tyler like showcase solely as a producer because. That's also a passion of his. Besides being a great artist in his own right, yeah. uh, you know, I think a lot of MCs should look to get some beats from Tyler. And he's so he's so intriguing when he raps. Like when he really wants to showcase his rap skills, which isn't all the time, but I feel like right now he wants to be like put in that conversation, which I think he deserves to be. There's not many people that can go bar for bar with Tyler the Creator, in my opinion, when he really puts that yeah. kind of on. Oh, another spotlight. I'm waiting on this Glorilla album. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I stepped on it last episode or so. You said you might agree with me now that she's the hottest in the game. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Gorilla. Uh, was it glorious? I don't love the Holem record though. The new one. I don't love that record. The new one. You know? I mean, it's, I, I it's, it's not. It's not it's like. High. It's not like TGIF. It's just high, high, high bar when she had. It's yeah, not like yeah, TGIF, yeah. but yeah. I heard another record that Glow got coming. Okay. Shout out to my dude Dame. CMG is cooking right now. They got the new singer uh, Layla, I think. Um, Yo, a bag is still. Are doing they got Layla like most deaths daughter? Um, no, her name is uh, I don't want to say her. It's like Lay Layla, something with an A. Okay, okay. But um, I'm really looking forward to this Glorilla album, like in a real way. I really want to sit with it. I want to ride with it in the yeah. car. I want to dissect it. And she feels like this is like her real. I think this debut is gonna album. be. I think this is gonna be a moment. I mm. think we need to really pay attention to what's about to happen with Glorilla because it's her debut album. Yeah. I think what's about to happen with Glow really is gonna be is gonna be shifting for female rap. I'll say that. I'm excited for so it. Nikki and Cardi should just play the back for now too. I'm not let, saying nothing about Nikki and Cardi. You didn't get you didn't get attacked too badly this week, did you? No, it's Elliot Wilson. He got attacked, but it wasn't. Like yeah, it wasn't. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't. No, <laughs> I know. Like the mentions are always attacking, but not oh, crazy attack. Before we go, speaking of that, I gotta call Cap to your man Metro Boomin. I'm irritated by him, man. He did this interview with Forbes. <laughs> We almost made it through uh, a whole episode without him picking a fight. Yeah, yeah, nah. <laughs> I, so I got, I got, and I love Metro Boom, but I got to check up on this. Yeah. 
So he does this like he's a Forbes conference thing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you know they don't talk to us in our platforms. So they got to talk to the white man. They got to talk to the big stage, <laughs> and um, he gets to ask him a battle question well, about the white. whole. Uh, that's true, yeah, but, but, he, but he's on a hip hop platform, hip-hop okay, gotcha. a West Coast based yeah, hip hop yeah. platform. Okay, you see, which is why they're fronting on us. Man. They're fronting on us. <laughs> the bigger picture should be bigger, but we're from the West Coast. The bigger picture. The bigger picture. <laughs> West Coast. Um, no, so. Uh, you see, you guys all saw the quote. He was like, yeah, yeah, it's just competitive. He downplays the whole thing. Dog, he dog, you and Drake have real issues. And I know you and Drake have real issues. I'm not going to even say where, where it started or whatever because I don't know and I don't do the gossip shit. But what I can say for a fact was I know Drake was pissed when you took him off that trance record. He DM'd me talking shit about you and all this type of shit, how mad he was he wasn't on the record. So clearly you guys had an issue since that point. You made these records called We Don't Trust You. Who is the you? If it's not Drake, then who is it? We still don't trust you. They doubled you, pro- down. you provided the canvas for the like that record. Da, 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 da. You set the whole canvas for Kendrick to go in. You made these records. It's like you were part of it. It's not Stan Culture just ruining it. Now, Stan Culture does, so he basically blamed everything on yeah. Stan Culture, which I get it. I deal with Stan Culture all day. I'm blocking Kendrick fans, Drake fans. The barbs, I battle them every day. On my <laughs> so he's right. Stand culture does ruin things, but you have to be respectful to your platform that you contributed to this chaos. You you was the conductor of the chaos. Yeah, you started it. Like so, they act like it's all cool. It's just competitive. It's like, come on, man. But like that's that the whole either. point. They're not these artists aren't accountable anymore. They don't go to the real platforms. They don't have to answer questions in the real way. It's all bullshit. Yeah, because that would have been a pushback immediately. It would have been like, Metro, like, come on, dog. Metro, come on, dog. you know like, you know what you did here. That's okay. who, who don't you trust, Metro? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> Who's the, you and we don't trust you? Let me ask a question. I'm going to play the other side. Okay, let's do it. Isn't that perpetuating what we were just talking about, though? Feeding the, the media fire of the bullshit? Nope. If, if we were to say, no, you're actually talking about Drake. I would ask it in a respectful way. I wouldn't ask it in a sort of inflammatory way. I would just say, well, it seems really clear that the whole we don't trust you content uh, content seems to center around Drake or as, a, as a concept. Is that fair to say? I would ask in a respectful way. I got you. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't try to stir it up. And I also don't think it's like, again, I don't even think it's on some street. I wouldn't even play the whole street shit. It's just we need clarity on a lot of things. And it's just like to act like it's just competitive when there's more to it. There's no, there's no going to be no was pushback. The control verse, was the control verse just competitive or was that real? I think it was competitive, but clearly other people took it as real. Exactly. It's it became real. I yeah. think it's subjective. Or it is subjective. Right. But again, I just I just think it's it's just it's just frustrating to me that the guy, if it's Forbes or this sort of mainstream platform, they get the opportunity to ask a question in that area and he gets to dance around it because it's not of the culture and there's no accountability well, there. And it's funny because I, I will say when I I did like a minute and a half interview with Metro for a complex uh, pop-up. And they asked me not to ask of anything mentioning those two guys. So it does suck that, like, I would have asked that in a way where, like, I would have just wanted to know his reaction on Ken- getting Kendrick's verse back. Did you know what you were about to spark? Did you see that all happening? But we're not allowed to ask. Even even me being a white journalist, in the hip-hop space, we're, you're not allowed to ask. Yeah, oh, and the one other thing, they, they, the fans called him out in contradiction because he was, like, the stand culture, blah, blah. He literally tweeted out, Pick a side, or like you pick your Stay side. On that side. Stay on yeah. that side, like you. So you fueled it, like you know. I don't know. I, I love Metro a lot. I think he's the greatest producer, best producer right now in hip hop, best producer in hip hop right now. Um, but yeah, I just think he plays. You know, he doesn't want to be honest about certain things, and he just plays. He plays vague. He plays it all as competitive. I love all my collaborators and it's competitive sports. Like, I mean, I guess it, it doesn't have to be the extreme of that. Does he maybe want to get down to everything and break it all down? No, but there's got to be something in between that, like. But well, we all have biases. I think I think what it is is just admitting to your bias and still oh, standing strong. For example, you you would admit what side you're on in this battle because of your ties. You've said it out loud, but you know, so you wouldn't hold that out and be like, "No, I I, I love both sides." I uh, well, no, you know. but uh, you're right. So, but I I think you can do both. Like he could have said, like you know, like. I have, you know, there's some issues on that side. I respect what we've done together. I in respect, the past, yeah, yeah, I respect yeah. all of our art together. Uh, you know, I was a part of this with Future, and I had Kendrick on the song, so you know, you know, even even if he made that, you know, what side I'm on in this, you know, where I stand. But you know, respect to both sides. It was just the the make it to make it seem like it's all it's all love the fans' it's fault. Not. No, it's yeah. all the fans' fault. And blame it on the fans, yeah, which I do hate. Stand culture, but that stand that stand culture though is is a bad problem we have in the culture now because. To be a Kendrick fan, to be a Drake fan, 
they're just so adversarial and they think they know everything and aggressive at you and it's like you're sending you're sending me these rat emojis and shit like that and sure. talking to me crazy and it's like yeah it's the same thing with Nikki Cardi it's like I still like Drake and Kendrick's music like that's the reality most of us still do yeah. kind of to your point of Nikki and Cardi it's like I don't think you have to pick a side in that way you just have to call it like what it is but these fanatics of one person acting like Drake won the battle or Kendrick is this it's just like it is exhausting online all day and it's also exhausting because their voices are as loud as voices that are really informed. And there's no way to distinguish between the two. When you go on your ex, like Meek Mill, and you have your little For You tab, some of most of what you're seeing is a lot of bullshit yeah. with real reality and real news that happened. Like the mayor got indicted, and then there's some conspiracy theory. And then the next tweet says this. It's hard to avoid. So it's hard to avoid, you know, non-factual shit and just this fueled stand culture that we have right now. So it is a problem, but that's not what the situation was overall about in this sense. So don't blame it all on the fans. I want to spotlight Ventro Boo, man. <laughs> no, I don't want to stop. I don't want to spotlight him, man. Take the spotlight out. Take his, <laughs> take his spotlight away. Yeah, uh, that's, that's it. That was good. That's it. That, that was, was a good, good one. Shout that out was to the, 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 <laughs> watcher, the listeners, the community, the team. Like, comment, subscribe. Shout out to the chat. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I love the chat. I be in, we be in the chat. So, yeah, about, yeah. so when we debut, let the fans know they may not be informed that when we debut uh, Saturday mornings. Yeah, Saturday mornings, uh, 10 p.m. PST. We have people watching from South Africa, Australia. You said 10, sorry, 10 a.m. PST. Uh, but yeah, we have people from Scotland. Like people all over are watching. That's why when we always ask where people are watching from, it's cool. And we be in the chat interacting mm -hmm. with you motherfuckers. Shout so. out to the chat. Yeah. The chat. We respect and, the chat. I don't I, know chat. I don't know chat. <laughs> All right. Bigger picture! <laughs> yeah. So much spotlight. That was good. <laughs> a lot of spotlight. What do we love? We love everything. <laughs>